All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the last match of the day. And of course, as usual, we're cultured. We save the best for last. I'm Belly Yadess host. I'm here with my two analysts. The new guy who's been amazing so far, Jacob. Jacob, how's your first day so far as we head into the last match? The elimination match, by the way. It's been a little bit harrowing, but it got way, way cooler when we got down to the very last game because I think that elimination games like this are way, way better than upper bracket ones because it means one team, after all the fighting they've done today, is ultimately getting knocked out of contention. Yeah, I said elimination like five times so you get the point. But Jesse, <laughs> <laughs> we're down to the wire, man. How you feeling for this matchup? I feel good. I agree with Jacob. This is going to be the most exciting match tonight because there's the most in the line. The loser of this cannot directly qualify for the six invitational. The path is closed. Of course, they're also not going to the major. That path gets closed. There's a lot of just sadness and not qualifying for events if you lose this matchup. So a ton is on the line. These teams are going to play their hardest, and I can't see. I uh, can't wait to see what happens. All right, so let's break everything down right now. The first team we will be talking about is going to be Canada's best number one over there in the CAPO. It's going to be Mirage. You see Flynn, one of our old town casters over there. You see Quartz, Silent, and the rest of the boys. They've been doing quite well, especially with Forceful behind them there. But Jesse, when it comes to this team, you say, mm -hmm. Mirage, they need to get it together mentally. You noticed a lot of mistakes last time they were on the board. And yeah, yeah it was really rough against Space Station. What needs to happen right now? Because they're playing for their lives. Yeah, I mean, I think the mental game is important, right? Like, Mirage maybe aren't a better team than Space Station, right? But they shouldn't be losing 11 rounds in a row to SSG. They're not that bad. I firmly believe that. Um, really, it did seem like they were starting to slip mentally. You know, when you get into that rut, when you start losing round after round after round, that can really spiral. And especially for Mirage, who's quite a young team. You know, they got Zilchi, who's been playing the game forever, and I get that. But Silent and Quartz are really young players, and they, they just turned 18. This is their first real team. When you've got a team like that that does have a significant portion of them, you know, a little bit newer to competitive Siege, that can kind of slip away from you, you know, and see, and Flynn hasn't been playing for too long, he's been casting and uh, all that. So I think that really, like, the mental game is something where they've got to make sure everybody's on board with things. Particularly, I'd say Silent was slipping quite a bit. You know, Quartz is playing fantastic, but Silent's a player that we know can pop off and frag. Yes. But he was very silent in that best of three. We can't see him do that again. Silent was silent. All right, Jacob, it's your <laughs> turn to talk about the boys from Canada and Maple Boys, right? Now, you trash canned them, but you know what? They trash canned an American team last time. They were in the qualifiers to go to the NA Major in August that we had the Dark they Zero did. 1, of course, right? But they beat one team, which was Tempo Storm, and you're questioning if they can do it again. And you said there might be parallels between that matchup and what's about to go down right now. I would like to think so. It might just be a little superstitious part of my brain that also likes to try to find these interwoven storylines, but that's exactly what happened. We had a lower bracket in the August Major Qualifier, and that was where Mirage faced Tempo Storm and won in two maps. It was pretty dominant. Uh, we didn't see all that much competition from Tempo, and we would later learn that they just didn't really have what it took, and now they're fighting for that relegation spot. So you can maybe discount the victory from Mirage a little bit, just knowing who they faced, but if they're down and the, the, the cards are against them, they're facing elimination. That is the opportune moment for them to turn their own fortunes around. And I definitely don't think that their performance against Space Station is indicative of what they can do in this game. I agree with Jesse. That's not the end of the world for them. They can do this against DG, but DG also showed up in a big way in that last series. So if they do it, it's going to be a hard fight. I mean, let's be completely honest, Jacob. I keep saying that to you, man. <laughs> but um, they didn't have the best showing against Space Station, and it's going to be hard to put our trust in them. But there's it's one true. reason why I would ever do that. Let's bring him up on the screen. It's going to be a player to watch, and he's a special one coming out of Canada. You hear a lot about Silent. We talk about Eska. You've seen the highlights on our Inside the NAL show. But Quartz has been something deadly lately. And Jesse, what does he do just just so that makes him so good he, he's always in fray he's always winning gunfights he's always uh -huh. at the right place at the right time why is he so special i mean i think that like last point is really important he's in the right place at the right time a lot uh you know he's that sludge player he'll, he's really good with his nades he'll hit a lot of them in the canadian division he hits a lot of them even in this qualifier so far um in the right place is a big thing working with his team really well you know he's a gunner for sure he can hit his shots i wouldn't say that's you know where he shines where he pops out you know when you look at a player like iconic if i can throw back to that last matchup that's a player you're looking you're like this kid has amazing yeah. aim quartz is not like the biggest aim player in the world but he is a really good player probably the best in the canada division uh and i've been really happy with how he's played so far he seems like he has a lot of game sense and it showed even for when sure. they got clapped by space station gaming but <laughs> 
their opponents. It's gonna be Disrupt Gaming. Let's bring them up on the screen. Let's talk about the boys. I'm gonna be honest. I was skeptical about this roster, especially after they replaced Knicks. But like Waffle said in that interview with the amazing Jesse said, we're not struggling anymore. This is a new look version of Disrupt Gaming and we came to play. You have NJR continuing to be NJR, but it's not just Tim. Right there, smack dab in the middle. You're gonna have Shuttle. Retro has been clutch. Jane I know, as a rookie, has been going off like the rest of the rookies. And I just love what Reed has been doing so far. He's been progressing so much. But Jesse, the thing about this team is when we see them take two steps, well, excuse me, one step forward, it seems like they don't take two steps back, but just one step back to where they kind of started at because we start to see the same mistakes over and over. Do you think that they're finally going to fix this to beat Mirage? To try I to beat Mirage? I think it's tough, right? Because I came into that last matchup thinking, all right, they've had a lot of time off. There's some things that I'm looking for them to fix, and I hope they do. And particularly, like, when we had Cafe as a third map, I'm like, all right, surely Disrupt aren't going to go here without fixing their kitchen attacks, without fixing how they play this map. Well, they no. played awful, right? And those yeah. kitchen attacks were so really bad. You know, we could talk about the coastline defenses as well. That was, you know, Sonic's map pick, so maybe they didn't focus on that map as much. Um, but it was still disappointing to see that they had a little bit static of defenses, right? They weren't necessarily adapting to the way that SQ were pushing uh, in ways that I would have liked to see from them. So there's some major things I think didn't really get addressed from DG's point of view. And whether that, you know, was legitimately not addressed or was just um, maybe addressed not in the right way, whether mm -hmm. they weren't playing how they should be, even if they've, you know, done it in practice, uh, it's impossible for us to say because we don't get to see their practice. Um, but for DG, I think there's more that needs to be stepped up. And in the last couple minutes, you know, have they improved since Sonics? Probably not. You know, there's very little practice and prep you can do in that amount of time. So really, it's just going to be, is this, you know, what they've brought to the table today going to be enough to beat Mirage? We already know it wasn't for Sonics. Will it for Mirage? We'll have to wait and see. I don't know what they're going to bring to the table, but I know for sure what one of their leading players is going to bring to the table. And that's going to be a ton of frags and game-saving clutches as he's one of the clutch leaders in Stage 2. It's going to be Shadow, and he's going to be my player to watch in this matchup. We've spoken about him for so long. He started throw off the season. Throw your shades back on. Throw your shades back on. There you go. And since you put him on, Jacob, you want to be the funny guy. He's been doing it from not I just a pure stats performance, but he also has just the longevity and the expertise. We were talking about this in the pregame a little bit before we went live. Shuttle's one of the only guys on this Disrupt roster that's got land experience. He's had so many trips around the world and he's You're been doing right. this for such a long time that it means that he just kind of carries that aura about him that he can always perform whenever the pressure is on the most. And Setting that aside, the statistics that he's been able to show through stage two have been lights out. We talked about him being tied for first in overall 1VX clutches. He's got the most kills for Disrupt overall. The, his average cost has been through the roof this entire time. He has wholeheartedly been trying to carry DG to the promised land by himself. And so far, it's done a very, very effective job, but there's still this match to put in the work for and then the entire rest of the lower bracket after that. All right, Jacob, you know, I love that breakdown, but you know what? You were wrong about something, and then I agreed with you, which made me wrong, and I feel really stupid <laughs> Wait, about what? that. All right, let me correct you on, on just one thing, because you're you're right with everything else. He's not the only player with land experience. You have oh, retro. Oh, you're right. You have mm -hmm. retro, and if I, oh, if I and stand Reed correct, does too. Reed definitely has experience. You have some good veterans yeah. on this roster, and honestly, Jesse, do you agree with me that we really just can't discount him? No, I mean, definitely not. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to say that. Uh, I think Disrupt Gaming are a really good team. I don't think that they play to their full potential all the time. Yeah. You know, I think that sometimes the mistakes they make make me scratch my head and make me a little bit frustrated. But the <laughs> skill is there, you know, and some of their strats, like their Clubhouse strats have been amazing. I love yeah. how they played on Clubhouse. So the talent is there, you know, the strategy is there. I think just putting it together and getting more consistent is the main thing that Disrupt have got to focus on. Yeah, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I know you see the timer at the top of the screen. We're getting the players into the lobby and ready for the next matchup. Trust me, it's not us. We've been waiting on them, right? But, Jacob, listen, man, when it comes to Disrupt from... Actually, what you've seen all day and all season long from this roster, do you really believe that they have a legitimate chance of not just beating Mirage, but moving forward and possibly getting that fourth spot for the NA Major? I think this is a really important question to ask because... They look like they can compete with a lot of these teams here. We, we don't know about Space Station yet again, but still, they look strong. The question is more, what, are Space Station the juggernauts that they seem to be against Mirage? And I think the answer to that question is yes. But if we, if we talk specifically about Disrupt, they just lost to Sonics. I don't know if the Sonics in their current state are a team that can go up against Space Station and win for that major spot. So 
against Mirage, there's definitely more of a chance, but if we had to go back to, for example, the lower bracket matchup all the way, I believe it's the second game that we have tomorrow in the qualifier, and okay. we see a rematch between Disrupt and SQ, I don't think that there's enough that we've seen through today and throughout stage two that demonstrates that either one of these two teams can go up against SSG and win. It's right. it, it's it's about trying to conquer the top of the mountain. And if you're having trouble with the lower rungs on the ladder, then it doesn't really give me all that much confidence. Jesse, I'm gonna throw it to you because I know you have a point, but doesn't that speak to the <laughs> level of inconsistency that we, we have seriously seen with Sonics, Disrupt, and Space Station in stage two? Yeah, I mean, inconsistency is like a global problem among Siege teams, and like, that's because Siege is a really hard game, it's very difficult to always play to your peak, right? Um, but for, you know, for the DG point, you know, I definitely do think that uh, they've got a decent chance if they can continue on this qualifier, because here's the thing, in their minds, when I talk to Disrupt Gaming, their hardest opponent in this qualifier was the Sonics. They said to me straight up, we're more worried about fighting the Sonics than we are playing against SSG. They say if we Seriously? beat Sonics in the opening matchup, we're not too worried about Space Station. They think they match up better against Space Station. Wow. They think their playstyle works better. And the fact that they came so close to beating the Sonics makes me think that, you know what? They're not worried about the other two teams. They came close. It's doable. Now, them not worried about Space Station doesn't mean that they shouldn't be worried about Space <laughs> I was Station. Say. <laughs> they right. might show up and get slammed um, if that matchup happens, right? But at least it shows that they're confident. And if their you know perception of where they're at in terms of the leaderboards is correct, then okay. they've actually got a pretty good chance of making it out of this qualifier in first place. You know what? Last time I questioned Jesse when he first big brained it on stream, he was completely right about that oxygen matchup. But you know what, Jesse? The map veto yeah. phase is it's been done now. The players are almost ready. We're okay. almost there. So some maps roll up on the screen. I want you to break it down for me and the viewers at home about how you think this game is going to go according to what you see at the bottom. All right, we've got maps already on your screen. Theme Park gonna be the first one picked up by Disrupt. Uh, this is when we saw Mirage play Dark Zero against it in the last qualifier. Obviously, uh, that one came pretty close. Mirage lost it in the end. Uh, Disrupt haven't been great here. You know, 6-8 against e United is the best they've really shown on Theme Park. So I'm a little surprised by that pick. It's a bit of a curveball. Mirage go coastline. You know, they just saw DG play here. They clearly liked something that they saw. They clearly saw something that they thought could be exploited. So they're gonna go ahead and pick up coastline to play it once again today. Uh, and then Oregon for our final matchup. It's one that both these teams play a lot. Um, for Disrupt, their only ever loss in Oregon was that 7-8 game against SSG. It was a long time ago, but, you know, uh, stage one, it was a huge matchup. Really well remember. Yeah, so uh, this will be a really fun series. I'm excited for Oregon. I'm excited for Theme Park. Coastline we're seeing a lot today, but if Mirage think they can get some upsets on it, then I'm really excited for that one too. All right, Jacob, it's about that time. Predictions, and then we're going to the matchup. But starting with you. Who's gonna take it home, man? This is it. Man, not again. Last game You're really day. putting me on the spot. One more time. I, I, I have to do it. I gotta put you in the hot seat, man. Oh boy. I mean, it, it, it kind of rubs off the wrong way because it's not an official prediction, but all right, I guess we okay. kind of have to. So, <sighs> Mirage, I want to keep rooting for. I genuinely want to hope that they've got an opportunity to do this well. But I'm going but, Disrupt, dude. You can't convince me that the way that they played against SSG isn't something that they'll carry over into their next series. I don't know if they can bounce back as fast. I got to do a good solid for Disrupt as well, mostly because I didn't call them in the last series, and look what happened. They didn't win. So my on-broadcast predictions right now are kind of the inverse of the curse, if you're paying attention. Is. All right, so Jesse, Disrupt Gaming for Caliber Jacob, are you leaning the same way? Are you going with the boys from your country? Listen... I love my country. I really do. Canada's a great place. Do but it. the Siege players and the Siege teams that come from there might not be to the same caliber no. as the teams from America. How I'm going to have to come to start gaming. I think they're better. <laughs> I think that uh, if you look at the last two games that we saw, you know, DG put up a good fight, Mirage fell apart. And yeah, Mirage had a harder opponent, but I don't think that you know mattered to the extent that it should have. Um, Mirage have not looked good today, and I'm going to take DG in this matchup. I feel terrible. This is it. <laughs> Production, you can do it. Put down that I predict Mirage is going to win. Someone has to root for him, okay? <laughs> wow. And Thank you. If it's not going to be on, them, man. it's going to be me. But um, for all of you at home, before we start the last match of the day, this is the elimination match. If you're just tuning in, I yes, I'm going to pound that as much as possible. Make sure you follow the Rainbow Six socials. We have them everywhere if you want to stay updated with the match times um highlights just anything regarding rainbow six and this esports scene 
make sure to take a look below and follow some of those accounts but now is the time and we have fresh casters on deck and ready blue and stokes take it away Alrighty, thank you very much, Veli. And it is just about time, ladies and gentlemen, for us to start our second matchup of the day. As Veli had said, it is an elimination match, so a lot is on the line. The future potential major contentions being the most obvious out of them. Stokes is with me here once again today. And Stokes, what do we think of this matchup in brief real quick? Mirage versus Disrupt. It's going to be an absolute hell in a cell. And I know that we talk about that a lot, John, in between quite a few teams inside of the NAL. But right now for both of these teams, this is the time to put everything on the table. It's elimination time inside of the qualifier. Either of these teams lose, they go home and get to watch from the sidelines. Well, as usual, we have our community poll question. Go ahead over to our Twitter account. That's going to be at R6 Esports NA. The poll should already be up. If it's not coming up in the next few moments, submit your vote and let us know who you think is going to have a larger impact for their team. Is it going to be J90 for Disrupt, or will it be Quartz from Mirage? Let us know. We'll have the results, and we'll talk a little bit more about if you guys were actually right a little bit later on during the show. The map vetoes, as we take a look at those, we're going to be starting off on Theme Park. It looks like kind of an interesting choice, more so for the fact that it's Disrupt's pick, and they don't have a great record on it. But I can personally understand why they go for it, because at least the last time I was able to spectate them on that map, they had quite a lot of good things going for them. It's just that they were up against much stronger opponents, at least at the time, much stronger opponents. And I think that may have led into a lot of the reasons to why they lost. And if memory serves me correct, all the stats in front of me right now, they, they were at least one or two of them relatively close matches as well. So they had good contention, probably thinking that they can take a pretty big advantage over Mirage. Of course, a team coming from a completely separate division and one that, you know, even in their own coach's words, they said they should be able to beat time after time again. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Thing's definitely a weird pick, but we also saw Mirage perform quite well on this map in recent history. When they went up against Dark Zero, they ended up losing 7-4. But I think it's still a good pickup here for Disrupt, mainly because the two teams that they went against, not only did they perform well, but I mean, they played against Oxygen on Theme Park, and that's arguably our best theme park team in all of the NAL. So, I mean, you got to give them the benefit of the doubt on that one. I think the more, even more interesting map pick here for both of these teams is that we got Oregon as our third choice for maps here. Both of these teams have not lost on this map in the last three months, John. Yeah, absolutely. I think that personally for me, that's a little bit more dangerous for Mirage when you consider the context of their opponents in those matchups. Disrupt only recently started bringing it back into the picture after like maybe one play day way back in the past there. But they looked really good on it the first time they did bring it back. So I think that, that for me, that's a pretty strong pick for Disrupt if we do end up getting to that third map, which means in my eyes, Mirage needs to look to try and close this out in two maps. But I could also be surprised by a performance on their third map. We'll wait and see how that all plays out. Of course, we're still eons away from that third map. It's all about the first map now, folks. We're getting ready to get started. It's theme park between these two teams. Loser moves out of the tournament and out of any chances to move themselves into the major and the winner moves forward with their chances still alive. Let's head in game and take a look. I think that we shall. I've got the band stats up here for DG and Mirage as well. So we'll see how this goes and see if it coincides with what we've been seeing in recent history. Mirage is going to start off with the Mav ban. Usually they like that Thatcher ban. DG is usually that squad that really enjoys that Maverick, but I'm assuming that we're going to have the Thatcher ban as well because DG really likes that set. I mean, we're talking Mav has six bans for them across this entire last season, as well as Thatcher having five. So Thatcher Mav ban off the table already. Let's see what they got for the defense. Hasn't been too much of a deviation from this two attacker formula that we've been seeing used by quite a few other teams as well. It's very much been quintessential for any sort of success here on theme park and has been a lot of the ways the teams have chosen to play it. Valkyrie's also started to become more and more of a common ban, just kind of across the board in general. This isn't even really a map specific ban, but we're going to see her knocked out once again in this map here today. And then, of course, we'll have the final one. This one's going to be from Mirage, and we'll get their decision in just a moment. I'm assuming it's going to be a mirror here uh, with, you know, going back in time Jager. here. But no, we're going to have we're going to have a, you know, off the wall band coming in. We're going to have <laughs> Jaeger come in. That's going to shift a lot of things here. Mostly the early game for both of these squads on offense. Since Jaeger's now gone, you only have Wamai for those throwables. And he works like Legion. He's on that timer for his utility. So he gets those discs throughout the round. If you're able to get some aggression early on, there could be some major problems for that defense. Mirage is going to get themselves started out on the defensive side of Theme Park. We'll take a look and see where they'll move into it. So like they're going to start upstairs. We've commonly seen teams go to 
either one of the two upstairs sites or throne room this is actually a, this is actually a map where the kind of starting sites sites the teams choose to go to off rip here uh isn't as obvious anymore teams seem to have their own preference picks so i think it's a really good sign for just the balancing of the map that we have so many seemingly viable sites in the mix here for teams to start off on. Attackers need to locate and yeah it reminds me a lot of uh like villa where a lot of teams just really go wherever they want to everything's viable if you you know try and make it viable i guess so it, you know it, it works out really well for uh both of these squads walking into theme park but lots of options for them we're going to be starting off upstairs for mirage here and already utilizing the thing that they ban most on defense they're bringing mira along for the ride Oh, so that might explain part of the reasons to why he's been left back in could be a pretty big piece of their defensive formula most important to note of course they're starting on defense too so get off to a good start maybe may not have to deal with it so much in the second half they get off to a good score start here but taking a look nothing else too fancy happening away from the mirror setups that we were just talking about here one of those mirrors is going to go on to the double wall that's already been reinforced into control here which is going to allow zilchi or another player who may be in that position later on Try and quick peek into that doorway and try to take anybody else out from Disrupt that's going to try and take control. Away from that, we do have, it looks like a hop-in rotate from the top of yellow into office as well. So that's going to be another option for players to fall back. And we also have this cutoff angle here going pretty much across that entire north to south strip from the Dragon Entry. Well, it seems that uh, Mirage has exchanged their Jaeger for more of a denial and, uh, you know, their uh, information game here. So we're going to be bringing the, uh, the almost the Mirage there, but the Mute as well as the Mozzie uh, to try and deny as many of those drones as possible. Really like this pickup, especially since they did end up banning the Jaeger. This is going to assist them a lot, especially for these early rounds where the offense is trying to find the positioning of these defensive members. And I mean, they are playing this so aggressive right now. Look at the positioning from courts and loading. Flynn also pushed up inside of security as DG try to fight their way inside of the building. Raj wanting to deny pretty much any control as possible here early on against the Disrupt roster. A lot of them still stuck on the outside of Dragon, as Stokes was just mentioning here, but some are looking for paths in, most notably, of course, NJR, but NJR needs to be cautious because of his own HP. Thankfully, there's other players nearby as well. But unfortunately, all of them on the inside are going to be from Mirage right now as they still maintain pretty much absolute control of the Dragon Entry. It looks like they have started to seed some of that map control back over to Disrupt now since they've already wasted a good half of the round. They don't need to keep that because eventually Disrupt is going to find a way to try and outflank them or outmaneuver them in that situation. And this slow crawl is working out great because now it's even given time for Silent to fall back, set up the pocket Mira. In the meantime, though, NGR is going to be able to find some good damage onto Flynn there as he edges around the corner over by showers. But nothing to take him below 50%. Other than that, it's just damage traded against what went on to NJR earlier. Not a whole lot of progress being gained here for Disrupt away from that. Well, it seems as though the game plan has been set up for Disrupt. They want to prioritize the office wall here, and that's exactly what Retro is going to be going for now. After NGR clear, burns, and uses that breaching round effectively. J9 and the rest of the squad now bully their way into waiting. J9 with the business onto two, but Mirage immediately fight back. J9 still allowed to exist inside of waiting, picks up loading at the back of the vault there. Still slow goings here inside of office. Nitro still out, but J9 doesn't even flick for it. Allows NJR to get picked up, but might have the clutch kill here. He travels underneath oh, no. the mirror. Silent not getting downed either, so he's able to battle back. Still alive and well. Quartz picks up one, but immediately traded. J9 knows where the last man is as well, and he knows that Silent's lit. J9 has full HP here. Shotgun out for Silent as he's trying to edge his way in, but it's going to be an ace. No faces for our man from Disrupt. J9 starting us off right here on Theme Park. Well, definitely. Definitely some good results for the community poll, that's for sure. And either way, a massive start for Disrupt here as J9O goes huge on the very first round of the series, coming out with an ace to bring his team to victory and get past that very annoying setup from Mirage that had been delaying them for over half the round. Finally was able to push past it, and it was the one piece of the puzzle that Mirage were not able to deal with. And it seems to be the only piece of the puzzle that was able to deal any significant damage. Great work, primarily from the inside of Waiting Room there, where J9O on the Zofia was able to unleash hell on everyone from Mirage and take them down to give his team their very first round.
Mirage did a very good job of slowing down the initial take from Disrupt. I like the aggressive showing initially that they had, especially for the balcony of Cash. But once that control was given up and they moved back, their game plan was to simply play around the uh, uh, the mirror at the top of Yellow and just continually slow down Disrupt, whittling away at them until they were able to get those picks. But what they didn't account for was Disrupt just pushing their way into waiting. There was no one covering the waiting door. They didn't have any crossfire set up there. And I mean, Jay, it was practically Practically like J9 was walking into the grocery store. I mean, they just like said hello to him at the door. He walked in, bought whatever he wanted and left. That was really it. <laughs> so uh, I, I feel as though for Mirage, this is just, you know, going back to what happened earlier. That SSG game was not the greatest. I think that this is the time to have that mental reset and be like, okay, guys, listen, we just allowed somebody to ace us in the first round. Let's just go back to the drawing board. Let's let these emotions get back in check and go back at it because I, I think right now that's definitely something that could be messing them up because no one just gives up waiting room like that it's a, it's a lot of good things that we saw from mirage uh in you know in ideas i guess you could say and mm -hmm. even in the early round quite a bit of it in practice but unfortunately it started to fall flat as we got towards the late round due to that glaring issue of meeting room being left unguarded came back to haunt them there so hopefully a quick correction that can be made by mirage even just within this round potentially as the setup to defend it can be somewhat similar depending on the way that the defenders choose to play in fact the site is pretty much right next to the same site that they just defended obviously with the only difference being this room still primarily defending the second floor here mirage obviously holding their players a little bit closer to the chest this time with currently three or four stacking on site and very, very small amounts of roam presence going out onto other parts of the map, most notably being Quinn extended into office right now. And even that's a very safe position to maintain as he has a lot of coverage and a very easy route to fall back and rejoin with the rest of his team. Look at this though, once oh. again, Disrupt just walking right in, NJR specifically, he's gonna have a feast though. He's only able to convert that second one, but thankfully his teammates have shown up to make up the difference already. It's down to just Zilchi from Mirage here in a 1v4, more than likely will be a 1v4 in a moment anyway. And indeed, it'll get finished off on that path as J9 once again seals the deal for Disrupt and claims round number two in their favor. This is not good. Uh, oh, the, the, not at the, all. Yeah. Uh, so <sighs> NJR just gets to walk inside of Arcade for absolutely free. The, the, there's no one on camera there for the Arcade balcony for even an audio cue. There's no one worried about somebody walking in from there. And you kind of got to give Mirage a little bit of a benefit of the doubt that, again, it is early game. You don't expect Disrupt to just waltz their way in. But that's twice in a row that's happened now with zero information to cover it or anything of the sort. And it's not exactly like we have the most info ops banned right now either. Valkyrie's the only info op banned. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that you can utilize to keep track of where these guys are. They're already shifting away from that now. I think Mirage has figured out what the problem is. Uh, they're moving silent on over to Malusi. They've got a little bit more of a roam game presence here with that vigil. And then lastly, the big operator getting six picked in would be Zilchi on that pulse. Gonna have a nice little bead on the location of Disrupt, uh, Disrupt Now, excuse me. Uh, so I think that that's gonna help them out a lot. They really need this info game to work for them. They can't allow Disrupt to continually walk into sight like that. Yeah, I mean, it's very surprising Disrupt was able to gain the courage to make that sort of a play so early on when you consider that there was a mute Mozzie combo from Mirage. So it's highly unlikely that Disrupt would have just gone in based off of zero drone intel. The only other path I could see was that they just had the capability to look into, say, the arcade window for such a long time, didn't see any activity, and felt that they were safe to move in on their own. But any sort of drone intel should have been denied with ease, given the amount of denial they had on just on the team in that last round. Yeah, and the, the thing is, is that Disrupt isn't doing anything special right now. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not like they're whipping out some strat that we've never seen before, or some lineup or whatever. It, it's simply just very straightforward, walking into sight, taking gunfights and winning. And sometimes it's as simple as that. And JR are going to get picked off quite early here by Silence. And that's actually going to be the uh, new MP5 uh, put on to Malusi. So no longer the T5 over the MP5, but she's got an angle grip. So, you know, it works out. Minimal impact from a utility department here is, is only the ash getting taken out. Uh, so, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, keep going. <laughs> okay, sorry. We lose some soft breach charges. Maybe a couple flashbangs, which would have been useful, but they got five other ones. So hopefully they can make up the difference. And hey, Jaeger's banned anyway. But regardless, we've got a little bit of action happening over at the pool table in B site. There's Zilchi taking some heat, but he's able to keep himself alive if temporarily. Shuttle suffering a very similar fate as he's at quite literally one HP right now. 
floating in the meanwhile here trying to set himself up right on the yellow corner to see if he can take another duel versus the players trying to push their way in from cafe but he's also trying to deal with the drone presence which is rapidly sneaking up behind him yeah, they could be running into some problems up here but they're delaying time and that's the one thing that they haven't been able to do especially in that last round initial round worked out really well for them but this time back to form j9 working his way inside here but a nice shot from silent j9 not ready for the peak and this is a silent that we're more used to seeing inside of the canadian division just stomping people on these tight angles silent with some shutdown angles right now doing some great work to prevent any sort of momentum being gained by disrupt disrupt still has quite a bit of their roster outside it's looking like it's going to stay that way as both zilchi and loading strike true with their nitro cells that brings the entire roster for Disrupt down to just read now in a 1v5 scenario, and it's going to stay that way as Quartz finishes things off with a very nice frag on Reed and a flawless round on top of that to finish things off. Beautiful rebound by Mirage. Hopefully just the beginning of something from them. Yeah, much needed, much needed. Disrupt trying to work their way into the building, but getting blown up all over the place. Uh, just some really good utility usage there from Disrupt and great use of that pulse to make sure that all of those, you know, nitro cells land where they're supposed to. Mix with us, mix that with some really good roam game up top, specifically by silent, and you're in for a really good round. So Mirage, great stuff there. They just need to get this snowball rolling. Turn that thing into a boulder. Let's see how far we can actually push this thing. Because right now, Disrupt, you caught him off guard this time, but going into these further rounds, I think that this is really where the rubber's going to hit the road on which one of these teams is better than the other. Well, guys, in the meanwhile, we do want to talk about some of the new skins that we've been promoting in-game. You've heard us talk about it before, and we're going to talk about it once again, folks. Be sure to check them out as they are all over the Rainbow Six store right now. Got plenty of great offerings like our NAL Smoke skin, as well as all the great R6 Share skins which are in the process of coming out. Be sure to jump in and take a look at those as they are the best way to support Rainbow Six, both in the form of the eSport in general and some of your favorite teams and players. Go ahead and check them out now. Some beautiful skins in there. Make sure you guys just click the esports tab in general. I mean, we've got so many skins in there, whether it be your favorite team or also the skins that you just saw on your screen. There's so many options and some beautiful skins overall. Personally speaking, if I had to pick one uh, that wasn't the smoke skin, obviously, I'd have to pick the TSM skin because it just looks so damn good on Zofia. You got to love those gloves. All right, guys. Well, back into the game here. We've got Disrupt down on the board, and you can see there's immediately a bit of an air of caution this time as the majority of the disrupt players start to approach that dragon balcony much more as long as at this time of any sort of runouts or angle setups that mirage may have tried to go for especially on njr's part as he was the very unfortunate victim of that in the previous round it seems like the majority of disrupt though is trying to split themselves up we've got players trying to move in from both cafe side and dragon side a lot of resistance coming in from silent there back over on the balcony for players trying to work their way into cafe so it'll probably be some time before we see any of the members from disrupt really start to take any control there especially it'll be a long time before we see them transition it downstairs to an area like where silent is currently holding over by the lab but away from that it looks like we got a little bit of action for njr here as he's getting cornered to a slight degree but there's also players on the other team trying to battle their way out of said corner and pick up a victory instead for the attackers but that's not going to happen loading wins it out once again versus njr taking him down and removing the ash from the fold yet again flynn will also push that advantage even further as he finds another kill onto retro that's also going to remove the hard breach from the attackers on this round some really nice early pickups here for Mirage as they finally wake up here on Theme Park. Silent getting some good information on the opposite side of the building so he knows where the rest of this unit should be moving in from. Mirage already transitioning down to the main floor here. Loading it a pickup shuttle as well and that's Case down inside of Gong. So now Disrupt has not only the last remaining two people to worry about but five members of Mirage as well as Case being down all the way across the map. The only thing they have right now is Split. They're going to drop right in, try and make the gunfights happen but it's going to be a flawless round here for Mirage and that's exactly what you like to see from the Canadian squad. We're going to have a re-host folks more than likely so you guys are going to be seeing our beautiful faces, but we're equally split now. 2-2 two, two here on Theme Park as Mirage have finally woken up once again. Yeah, Mirage have really woken up, and especially in the department of their Rome game, which in the last two rounds has really just shut down any real attempts from the Disrupt roster to try and take map control, especially early on. 
We saw it really take effect on this round right here. The final two players from Disrupt were left really without any option at all, but to try and drop down onto the first floor, take some control for themselves, ultimately to get shut down by a very nice pinch. So both the communication game and the shutdown game that's happening on Mirage's side is working beautifully. And even if you look back on round number one, a round where Disrupt were ultimately successful, even there, Disrupt had some problems clearing out the initial roam presses. There was all of that pressure going up against them on the Dragon Balcony that eventually the players from Mirage decided to fall back from, which ultimately would have led to them losing the round there. But they seem to kind of be kind of doubling down on it in rounds three and four here, and it's worked out a lot better for them. I'm really glad that you brought that up because that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. I, I, I just dropped my pen. But uh, <laughs> what I really wanted to talk about is the aggressive front that Mirage is now showing in example well, in difference to what we saw in those first two rounds and I, I really think it's indicative of that first round and what happened in that early game where we saw them trying to pressure that dragon balcony they realized that disrupt are really not handling any of the space checking that mirage is doing and they continue to get these picks disrupt can't refrag and then all of a sudden they're down on man count they have to do something risky and mirage are there every step of the way to continue picking away at them so until Disrupt can try and figure out some way to get around this early aggression, I don't see Mirage slowing it down anytime soon because when Mirage does, well, we saw what happened in those first two rounds. Disrupt find their way, they, they find their comfortable spot inside of the map, they go for the execute and they end up winning their gunfight. And this is the other important part that we talk about here is the gunfight department because this whole strategy of aggressive roaming to try and contain the attacker's presence across the map is working out right now for Mirage, but it relies a lot on their rumors winning these early gunfights, which, you know, credit to them, they are, as, these, as of these past two rounds here. It's multiple players that are Fair having enough. to step up to the plate and pick up early frags, you know, earlier on on the round timer, and they're doing just that. So they're holding really, really solid control. There's a lot that Disrupt has to battle pass now to try and turn this around, as long as that fragging performance is going to remain consistent for the rest of this half. Yeah, I, I think inside of these last two rounds, especially, this is truly the test where it comes in for Mirage, because this is going to give Disrupt an opportunity to change things up and adapt their plans, especially with those rehosts coming in. Uh, they're going to be able to talk things out and really get down to what their main problem is on these offenses. They have two rounds to pick it up, and e picking up either one of these rounds is really good when it comes to Theme Park. I mean, again, let's go back to the bands and talk about that. Right now, we're sitting on a Thatcher Maverick band. If you guys are new to Rainbow Six Siege, that is really really hindering of the offense and what they're capable of doing it's really hard to get you know your hard breach down to get walls open you're more than likely going to have to deal with a lot of funnel attacks and that's really how disrupt handled that early game was just try and push somebody in and see if they can get those early picks to have that effect we're going to be hopping back in now folks so last two rounds of this half coming at you pretty quick all right, guys, let's take a look at it. Another thing that Disrupt could maybe look to is maybe not putting NJR on the front of some of these attacks it's two rounds in a row. Now, first time was a run out, so we kind of can't really blame him too much for that one. But the second round, of course, when he actually did have to take the fights up on Dragon Balky, that's where he was able to fail for the second time. And that's where now this is going to continue to happen. Maybe someone else may need to step up to the plate and be able to take the first contact here to hopefully, at the very minimum, deter additional aggression from the Mirage side. Is That's another thing that seems to be pushing that story forward for Mirage more and more is the fact that they at least in the last two rounds, have gotten the advantage. And like I said previously, have been wanting to double down on it instead of falling back and playing more passively into their site defense, as is often the case for a lot of other teams. Let's see how that's all going to play out as we are going live with the resumation of the game right now, heading into round five here. Okay, well, the, the big question for me is, how is this, you know, first minute and a half going to go? We saw Mirage, especially on this site, have a very aggressive front, but then they backed up utilizing those mirrors to try and lock down the site instead of continually trying to put their face in harm's way. I thought it was a good idea, but obviously didn't work out really well for Mirage because, you know, J90 exists. I really hope you guys voted for him on our social medias because if you did, you're having a really good day. Yeah. Uh, so for Mirage, I really want to see them just stick to their guns up on this, you know, uh, these initial minutes, try and get those early frags. And if they do get those, then back off of Disrupt. I I think it's really just been uh, the fact that Disrupt are allowed that mid game with their maximum potential uh, that allows them to continue to get throughout these rounds, especially in those first two. So moving into round five now, hitting the action phase, Mirage with the exact same thing that we saw last time, still going to have a pocketed mirror on Silent as well. So let's see for Mirage as the continued aggression is going to work out for them. 
same bit of aggression coming in from our attackers as well with at least two to three of them looking towards dragon balcony at the beginning of course we've got the usual sledge going up onto the roof that's just going to be a quick little chore list here for shuttles he's got to take out those roof hatches njr will come out on top of his initial duel this time and that is also the duel versus loading which in the past two rounds has gone into njr's favor now starting to flip it a little bit here or excuse me has gone into loading's favor now starting to flip it around maybe this round could play out differently or at least it's the beginning of something that could go in that direction you can note mirage doesn't have that presence extended out very much further than him as all other players are playing much closer to the site well we were talking about how we wanted to see njr maybe back off on the ash and you know play things a little bit slower but he ends up getting the initial pick granted he's going to take quite a bit of damage for it but that's nevertheless flynn's adjusted downstairs into barrels his nitro cell already being utilized but this didn't get any damage on to reed seems that mirage had a pretty good beat on what he was doing but reed's going to go all the way across the map over to arcade balcony could also utilize cafe here if needed but overall this is a nice adjustment from disrupt they need to put some sort of pressure on the back end of mirage's setup otherwise it's that one front attack and we all know how that goes bit of a hail mary nitro cell there from courts not going to lead to a whole lot of damage as the majority of disrupt haven't even entered that room still just primarily holding an angle retro is going to go for a slight rotate here too which will leave njr as the primary player to try to push in through showers into office away from that chain nine well i mean it's no surprise that he's checking down this corridor yet again as he's going to inspect waiting room this is the avenue that was left open for attack and was really the gate that allowed j9 to transition himself into an ace back in round number one so he's definitely looking to see if that's going to be an opportunity that will present itself once again for him here in round number five and he does see an opening here he notices that defense on the hall is relatively Ooh. light but it's gonna be a nade from shuttle that nets us our next kill another nitro is thrown way too early by the mirage squad and ultimately does zero damage to the attackers here as we come down to the last 30 seconds we're also going to see some of the hard breach begin opening up and a nice timing kill here from j9 catches course just as he tries to swing reed also picking up the final two for disrupt here as they clean up the rest of the defenses for mirage and claim a third attacking round for themselves here on theme park well, I, I think we've mostly got it. I, I mean, you get disrupt to mid game and they're just allowed to have way too much effect on the setup. Mirage slowly trickling their way into these gunfights and losing them as the man count continues to go down. Disrupt just gets tighter and tighter around the site, eventually executing when there's only two Mirage members left. And, you know, when it's a 4v2, that's going to be really, really difficult, especially when you don't know where the last member's coming from. Reed with some great patience over on the cafe side to wait for his other team members to actually have an impact on the site so that reads rotation in would work out well for him picks up two kills disrupt up three two right now on theme park offense this is looking really really strong for them defender intel is also starting to become a bit of a problem i i noted it in the middle of that last round there as well that there had been two nitro cells kind of just tossed out and they seem to have been tossed out incredibly early this is leading me to believe that mirage is starting to panic a little bit about potential executes that aren't actually coming anytime soon and that they might need to kind of hone that part of the game in a little bit better here as it may lead them into situations where they overreact, possibly overswing, as we saw in the case of, I believe it was NJR's second kill on that previous round, where defenders are taking fights that may not need to be taken, and that could ultimately serve itself to push Disrupt into a better, or rather a more advantageous position than they were in before. I mean, even if they do end up getting the 3-3 split here, like, it's still, you know, solid for them. It's not the worst thing in the world. Just obviously with those offensive bands, it changes up a lot of the flow on how the map's going to go. But I completely agree with you. Mirage with a lot of, you know, very, very early utility usage that is just, you know, landing on deaf ears. I mean, there's nobody there for, a you know, a country mile, and they're throwing nitro cells through smokes and everything. And that's not exactly what you want from your, you know, anchor operators at that you know minute minute 15 mark especially when that executes not even happening uh, you know obviously if he's if he's throwing it and it's doing some damage and it's a whole different story but i mean we're, we're chucking him simply because you know another team member died and that's not the best thing to possibly happen for the mirage squad so mirage gonna try and change things up we're headed down to drug once again this is the site that they won prior so 100 win rate up against disrupt so far they're gonna have zilchi back on the pulse and this is something that you and i have been talking back and forth on throughout this entire game so so far it's been the intel game for this defense that's really been hindering them i think keeping the pulse in play especially here with how potent they were with those nitro cells it's a really good choice definitely should make up for any lack of info that show seems to be showing up in that mid to late round situation 
That has often become the problem for Mirage, as we talked about. Their roam game seems to provide quite a bit of intel until those players begin to fall back. So players like Loading and Quartz that are out in the fight right now. Speaking of Quartz, he's actually going to get himself into a little bit of a skirmish here. Him along with Jay and I will trade damage, but Zilch is going to get found out by Retro, and that will remove most of the late game intel that Mirage was relying on that we just talked about, Stokes. Yeah, that's a big, big problem because every single time that Mirage hasn't had that intel, it hasn't went their way. But we still have some possibilities here on the roam until NJR removes that. Oh my, a double headshot clickety clue right through there for NJR. Walks right in, cleans up the room, and all of a sudden Mirage, not even on their back foot, they're laying on their back, but silence with a very nice shot onto Retro inside of the bathroom. This is ramping up, and we still have a minute remaining. 2v4 right now for Mirage as they skimper back to site. Flynn trying his best to gather where exactly the biggest threat is going to come from. Is it on top? Is it the next room? Or is it in the showers? He doesn't know. And unfortunately, that's going to lead to his demise as NJR takes him down. A third kill just within this round for him. Silent, who was the only player to pick up a frag so far for his team in this round, is unfortunately not going to be able to pick up any more as NJR gets his fourth. He heard us talking smack about maybe taking him off entry, so he just decided to have a massive round for himself and gets all the entries, all four of the kills there for his team, pretty much cleaning up shop all by himself and putting the players from Disrupt into a great position at halftime with four rounds on their attack. NJR had to hang the G36C up real quick. He took out the R4 and just starts gunning everybody. That's see right there. That's why you that's why you always pick the R4 over the G36C. I will hear it no other ways. I guess. No other ways. I mean, yeah, kind of, sort of. It is still personal preference, and that <laughs> 1.5 is pretty good, you know? But, I mean, hey. Play the game the way you, you know. want, people. <laughs> I mean, you bought it, you know? You might as well play it the way you exactly. want to. Oh. Do it. We're, Do it. oh, okay. So, are you going to lock it before That's, we talk? It's already okay. locked. Let's talk about some buffs real quick then. Okay, so Glaz is coming into play, folks, and I thought we were going to have some fun with the Yana, but I wasn't even ready for this. Glaz back in play, and we haven't seen this in a very, very long time. Whether that be a good thing or a bad thing, I'll let you guys be the decider. So, Glaz recently got a buff. If you guys didn't know, Glaz, is, Glaz actually has a thermal scope on his gun, uh, but it just so happened that quite some time ago, they nerfed it to where it took a long time to actually warm up to where you could see people through smokes. They have recently cut that timer by more than half, actually. I believe it's at 0. It's, 0.4 it's, seconds right now. It's pretty right much now. what it so, was a while ago now. Like Yeah, so basically now you're allowed to see through smokes, and obviously since they can't see you, you, you see where this goes. You have a thermal scope, you shoot them through it. You know what I mean. Arguably the biggest change, there was a video that Kickstar posted, either on his Twitter or like someone posted on the subreddit from his stream or something like that, that basically shows there's very little penalty for moving while you're scoped in now too, which was arguably the biggest part of that change. Because now, even if you're shooting out like within a smoke or something like that, you can still change your position pretty consistently and still be able to mm -hmm. see through the smoke, which is going to make trying to fire back once he starts shooting at you a real problem because now he can be mobile. Yeah, he's, he's got really good chase down potential with that. And since obviously he can just actually, interact with you through the smoke. I'm actually I mean, kind of surprised Mirage didn't bring an ace with this as well because then you would get the four smokes and you'd potentially have more windows of opportunity to use that as well. But... It should still work regardless. It's just something I would have wished to have seen in this lineup here. Yeah, that was a big thing for Glass back in the day as well, is that he's self-efficient when he is this good because of the smokes in his kit. And that's something that a lot of people were looking to take away from him. But I definitely agree with you. Putting Ace in this lineup would make it even more potent because you just have more access. But they might be worried about the burn, even though the Jaeger is banned. Like, There's a lot of things that could be going on here for Mirage. But I can definitely tell you that one of them is, you know, Silent Dying because he no longer has any life. So that's a, that's a big pickup here. That's one of the hard breachers off the board. So... Have to see how they want to try and handle these hatches. Since Kaid is in play, it's going to be quite difficult to try and get split, ha uh, split hatch open. They're more than likely going to be going for some walls. So just a couple of rotates here being set up for J9, just in case he needs to get out of here. In the event he gets pinched over the next few moments. And there's still also a couple of rumors which haven't really had to have a piece of the action yet. Loading is still looking for his first target here on the glass. It's been a pretty light round for actual attacker action here is only silence been cut off by a nitro cell and away from that we haven't had a whole lot reed is going to kind of get awkwardly walked out on here by zilchi zilchi very much ready to take that fight and as a result of that takes him down bringing us into a 4v4 yet again loading you can see an example by the way of what i was just talking about where you're not being penalized for movement so much on this scope anymore you can see it pretty much instantly goes to the full four bars and even moving rarely brings it under three. So you're going to have really good vision from this scope, even if you're moving at almost full speed. 
Yeah, so this could be a major problem for a lot of these guys, especially if they get yellow wall open. We could see some really good smokes utilized to try and take these crossfires away from Disrupt. But now it's all of a sudden with the shoe on the other foot, Mirage in the lead as they've taken down two. NJR takes down Loading as he tries to entry frag with that rifle, but only deals damage to NJR. Frag grenade and deals some more damage, but they are all over the board. He tries to pre-fire his way into the ash, but quickly gets thwarted by Quartz. Full control now over to Mirage. They just need to get some of these walls open. Only 20 seconds remain now in this three versus two. Stun grenades pour in through split as it seems like they want to rush and that's exactly what they're oh, going no. to do. Retro picks up all of them. What just happened right here? Mirage not utilizing any hard breach. They had the wall electrified, but the, what? The bait the, the of split the rush right there is what that was. Oh man, that was that was uh, that was not expected. I did not expect that one to go that way at all. Disrupt pick up yet another defensive, well, their first defensive round here and go up 5-2. Yeah, so I mean the obvious thing that goes on there for those who missed it is Mirage have to spend a good portion of the round down to that last, I think it was about 40 to 50 seconds clearing out the extended room over in lab, which wasn't the site. The site was in throne room. So after they had cleared out the lab, they only had that very limited amount of time left. And I'm guessing in their minds, they decided that they did not have enough time to add another facet to that and try to rotate somebody over towards maybe like Dragon Stairs entry. And even there, right? That's still an area they haven't been in and probably don't have good drone intel on in a while. Someone could have already been waiting there and could have been a free pick. So they're thinking of themselves their best option is to just try and force the push into split. But the biggest issue is, as far as I can see at least, nobody's watching that left side as they go in. So it's very easy, of course, for the final player alive on Disrupt to just swing out and get a nice little triple kill right there. Yeah, I, I also assume that the rest of the walls there were dealt with with mute jammers because we, we saw the uh, yellow wall being electrified by the uh, electro claw. But, I mean, just rush split, especially when, I mean, at least in siege time, you have a decent amount of time left. I mean, we're, we're, we're still right above the 15 second mark while everyone's getting gunned down and split. So, you, there's still a lot of things that Mirage could have done there. I'm just very surprised that the split rush with no one worried about Furnace was the choice. That's, that was really it for me. So, also, tactical error from Mirage is going to cost them yet another round here and put Disrupt into great footing here to continue to gain more and more rounds on their defense. Now with a three-round lead, they only need two more to close out the first map of this series and put them only one more map away from eliminating Mirage from the qualifier entirely. Speaking of Mirage, we've got the large majority of their player base looking to move their way in over toward the cafe side. Either that or trying to jump into lab early on here as we do have quite a bit of drone work going on downstairs as well. Well, Disrupt spread well across this entire top floor as Mirage are actually going for a bottom floor execute here, or at least bottom floor clear, just making sure that there's no roamers. Good starts here for Mirage. No early pickups just yet, but a little bit of damage onto Zilchi as well as J9, but that's exactly what we expect from these two teams, especially with what we've seen so far. So, good beginnings once again for Mirage. They actually ended up six picking away from the Habana as well. We got Silent on the ace, so adhering Blue's warning of bringing some more smokes, but they've actually shifted things up. They've moved the smokes over to Silent. Loading now has frag grenades on glass. That means there's four frags, and I can see why they'd want to do that. It seemed like Mirage had pretty good drone intel, was able to net them at least one kill. We'll come back to this point in a moment, as we've got a flurry of frags coming up, and it's in the favor of Disrupt. Two for them, one for their opponents, but scratch that. Flynn equalizes it yet again as he takes down NJR. With that trade, like I said, we're back down into an even fight. At three versus three. Retro Reed and J9 alive for Disrupt. Flynn, Silent, and Zilchi still up for Mirage here. Mirage going to call an audible, at least for a moment, as they'll pull their players back. Flynn will maintain his position on the inside of Arcade. It does look like Silent or Zilchi's going to be grouping up with him. I believe that's Silent to his right right now. Yep, and Zilchi's moved in through Cafe, but Zilchi's already been found out and taken down through the destruction on that central wall. Nice hold, nice setup here from Disrupt. Flynn could suffer a similar fate as he now gets brought down low, and it's not too much longer before Silent is also eliminated. That's another round from Disrupt. They're just one away from closing it down now just such harsh crossfires there that was masterfully played from retro a guy with all that land experience we were talking about on the desk it's exactly what you expect from him cool calm and collected inside of that three versus two there 
Very nice, uh, very well done there by Disrupt. As you said, called the audible, slowed things down, got the site members back to site, and then just played for the crossfire for daycare. Worked out really, really well for them, but now it's all in Mirage's lap. What do you guys do here? You're down 6-2 right now. DG are in the favorable position. They have the defensive side. They're up on man count, and not only man count, but map count. And Mirage now have to try and figure it out from the offensive side. We already have some adjustments coming in. We have the Yana in now for the glass. Glass not working out. I honestly think that this isn't the worst thing in the world, especially with the Yana coming back into play. Not only are you going to keep the frag grenades, but I mean, we're also going to have access to that ARX that everyone's been, you know, really putting to good use on Nomad as well as Yana. Really, really good gun, as well as that hologram that we talk about all the time. I think this is the big factor that's going to help out Mirage quite a bit. Just having access to that extra intel game to really influence this early, these early rounds and early engagement. Especially considering it's on loading a player who was pretty impactful on the defensive side I think could continue that with the right tools it's been two rounds in a row now where the glass got forced into a duel at very close quarters and it's just not always going to work out that well for class in those situations so I think that they're deciding that that's going to be too common of an occurrence based on the way that disrupt are playing and they're probably right to do that based on the Rome presence I've seen so far with that last round being a bit of an exception the players from disrupt have been playing their Rome game into very close quarters positions where they can easily lock down the kills if someone tries to swing against them the glass is just not really going to work out in that scenario let's bring another operator in which not only of course just has a regular rifle which can gunfight more proficiently in those situations but also has an intel utility piece which is only going to help them out in that department even more okay well possible map point here for disrupt we'll see how it works out for them defense looking quite strong they're obviously picking up quite a few things from uh, what we saw mirage running specifically the pulse but he's just so damn good on this side anywhere that you're downstairs on a site and you know the offense is going to come in above you pulse is one of the best operators you can have inside of your lineup that cardiac sensor nitro cell combo almost guarantees you a pick every single time and even if you don't hit the nitro cell you get so much information on what the other members are doing on that offensive squad i mean look reed can't kill courts here but he can tell NJR that Quartz is here. NJR now knows the position of Quartz. He knows that he's going to sledge in here. He knows he has somebody to worry about. And that's exactly why he's going to go for the rotation like this. He works in right behind him after picking up Silent inside of waiting. This guy has no idea where NJR's went. He's practically put this man on skates at this point. Silent off the board. No more AK-12. All those Selma charges gone as well. Great intel work being done by the Disruptor roster only serves to push them closer and closer to that map victory and the obvious 1-0 lead that would come with that. Members of Mirage still trying to figure out exactly where the Rome presence is here from Disrupt still after the first player that they lost to it. So needing to check every single room because of NJR's movements. And that's going to take a long time to do it. And even worse, they may not even get the right intel, which could reopen the possibility for well, this to happen. NJR about to re-swing right into the hornet's nest here. There's one for free as the Yana goes right down to the ground. That's two now for NJR. And I think his job is done. If he wants to, he could try to recommit for a third kill, but there is absolutely no reason why he would need to do that at this point in the round. NJR really just ran down, killed a man, then ran right back to his house. Like that was it. <laughs> he just he just went right back, right back to security. Just gonna sit in there and play out the rest of the round. This so far has just been dynamite for disrupt inside of this map point round. This is exactly what they need to close this out. Only three members remain for Mirage, and they've got a lot on the board to deal with. Well, my discs everywhere. They haven't had sight pressure, and now they have to try and burn through all of this. And it looks like it's gonna be a flood inside of drug. I don't see this going very well unless Zilchi can try and get this initial kill here. Quartz with a frag grenade in, does some damage, but definitely not going to be enough. Stun grenade in now. Nice kill here by Zilchi, but they have to worry about the crossfire and its footholes instead. Shuttle's gonna get lit up, and now the thermite in. Flynn immediately going for the plant. Good support play here. Shuttle gonna get lit up once again, but taken down. This crossfire being held from Quartz. Can Flynn hold down Drug Lab? This is what needs to happen for them. Flynn gets one, but he immediately gets refragged by J9. Quartz, the last remaining member for Mirage. Their hopes and dreams line here for theme park all on the shoulders of courts diffuser now being picked up and he's got a hop in the window unfortunate here for mirage as they get taken down by njr with yet another multi-kill inside of round nine disrupt tape theme park solid effort by the disrupt roster especially from their defensive half showing us some beautiful stuff specifically njr and the rest of the roster showing us some great roam work on that last round as well really giving us a convincing map opener here or match opener i guess i should say on theme park to give us a 7-2 scoreline to start 
getting ready to head ourselves over towards coastline that is the next battleground that the folks from mirage have to get themselves ready for and they need to get themselves ready for it very very quick as unfortunately that first map doesn't look so good for them and if they lose the second map well they're already going to be eliminated from the qualifier outright any final words from this first map stokes Flynn, you got to get the boys in it. I don't know what else to tell you. That's it. You got to get the boys in it. All right, guys. We'll stick with it. We're going to come right back after this short break with some breakdown from our analysis desk, of course, of map number one. And they'll get us ready for map number two as well. So stick with it. We'll have more from the major qualifiers right after this short break. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't I don't know what to say. Kind of like how Canada just closes borders to America. Looks like Disrupt Gaming is about to do the same to the number one team in Canada to stop them from playing in the NA Major. I'm Veli once again joined by Jacob and Jesse and fellas. We they can't be happy about this. It just kind of looks like Mirage is not doing a good job of escaping that dumpster fire mentality that <laughs> carried them through the entirety of their first series. It wasn't pretty. They got two rounds and then the rehost and then disrupts just swept the rest of the board like they did to the Sonics back on Clubhouse just in the previous series. It's not pretty. Mirage gave me a very, very <laughs> slight fleeting hope. A little bit of chance with those first two rounds bit. on the board and then yeah. just complete disappointment. Jesse, how you feeling, man? <laughs> I feel sad. You know, as a Canadian, I know I picked DG, but I am feeling uh, feeling quite bad for the boys. They're not this bad, I promise. I think they can do better than 2-7 against keep DG. You keep saying that. Yeah, I know. And uh, we'll see <laughs> if, I, if I finally get vindicated. But so for now... Yeah. Yep. So there you go. Nobody on Mirage went positive, but NJR had a field day, right? And I have a serious question to both of you. How many rounds have Mirage won today in three maps? I can count them all on one hand. Are you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm seriously Is asking. How many rounds? Is it six? It's five. It's five. You're they right. won. Uh, <laughs> they five can... rounds you... over three maps. If you put all their round wins together they don't even go to overtime on one map <laughs> is that what you're telling me jacob it's genuinely that bad uh looking uh. over like very briefly on the stats as well i also love how guys like shuttle who we've been hyping up literally all day and Reed <laughs> can sit with a negative kd all the way down to the bottom of the scoreboard and disrupt can still slap mirage that hard i'll get it I don't get it, Jacob, but you know what? I asked the questions, and that's all I'm going to do for now because, yeah, <laughs> this has been a rough one. Um, talking about Mirage, you saw a lot of questionable operator picks. I'm going to be honest. I saw Zilchi on Ash. I, I saw just a lot of different things. What were your series? Uh, excuse me. What were your thoughts about that? You you weren't too happy about those picks. I wasn't really happy about them, no, because it looked like they were just getting switched to, like, players that shouldn't have them. Zilchi on Ash particularly confused me. I'm not saying the guy can't go and play Ash when he wants to play it, but when you've got Silent there as well, it's like, why not put the guy who's playing Hard Breach on the Hard Breach role, or someone who plays support on Hard Breach? And then I think it was also confusing because Loading picked Glaz. The one round that they were on attack and then was <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, I guess they this doesn't it. work, so we can't try it again. Well, they no, they tried it out once. You'd think the American Sniper would stick to his name or maybe swap to Kali since we have a Thatcher ban up, but no, he's just like, all right, well, we tried it once. Overpowered Glass just doesn't work for me right now. And then stopped playing it. Like, why? <laughs> I have no idea. I, honestly, if they were doing op picks like that, I would have recommended to put Quartz on Ash and just pray for the best. I, mean, I was thinking that, about the same, yeah. But Quartz having Quartz play not play Sledge. Sledge. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Why would he ever play something that's not him? Wait, 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 Jesse. Quartz yeah. has a 100% pick rate on what operator? 
Sledge, like stage two. He's yeah. only ever played Sledge. Yeah. Stage one, I think he did flex a bit, but yeah, it's it's been just Sledge so far. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But Jesse, you know what? Not talking about Mirage anymore, kind of. Um, the yeah. Sunlight Disrupt Gaming, you okay. love how they played when it came to opening kills. Mm -hmm. When they got their first bloods, they were successful, but it's not just that, it's what they did after that. What was it? Yeah, so I mean, there was a moment in that first half, right, where Mirage started to get their footing, you know, and they got that by playing some Meat Mozzie Vigil Roams, got pretty aggressive, you know, and they were taking those uh, aggressive plays against DG. Then around five, they started to clue that in, right? I mean, I think it was Loading who got pretty aggressive on the Wamai. Uh, he got, like, ran up to Cash or something, and he died as the opening death, okay, because NJR was ready for it. So now they've killed Wamai. What do they do? They throw those frag grenades in and they get more and more kills and they start racking those up and they just topple over with man advantage. The very next round, what happens? Well, the very first pick is Retro getting a kill onto the site player of Pulse. That's your Pulse dead. And what happens to the top floor roamers? They get slammed by who other but uh, NJR, right? So it's a lot of these like capitalizing on key operators and then making sure you can utilize that to get even more kills. And I thought that yeah. NJR did a great job of that. The rest of the team as well were all there. Um, I thought that the, you know, the focus points on DG were really, really uh, impressive tonight. You know what, Jesse? I love that you brought up that point. There, there's the only play that really comes to mind whenever I think of that whole map of theme park is when yeah. NGR ran straight through into base <laughs> and Mira is still putting her one-way yeah. mirror on the wall. They're reinforcing. What is happening there? <laughs> and he got like a 2K and 3K and they won around quite easy, right? It's insane. What's but you know on? what? Map number two is about to go underway. They're, they're getting ready for it right now. But just to let you guys know, when we did our community poll on social media, told you to pay attention. The question we asked was, which player would have a larger impact for their team? It was between J90 and Quartz. You guys <laughs> voted, and um, it was surprisingly close. And, you know, it makes me feel good, Jesse, was because really? they, started, they started to put some respect okay. on Canada okay, with good. this Thank one. you. Thank you. I like it. Was That's respectful, right? Yeah, uh, I guess. Okay, sure. <laughs> Is it warranted? Probably not. I mean, Jane, I know, started this map with an ace, remember? All right. So, all right, map two is about to start soon, so I'm going to ask you guys, make it quick. Are we going to see a third map with Mirage, or is it going to be an 0-4 for the day? Jesse, you want to uh, go first? Yeah, no, I think Mirage are playing like garbage tonight. They're going to lose this map and end it out, I think. All right, I you know hate what? to say it, but um, that's the truth. I'm going to take it one step further. I think those five rounds that Mirage won over the course of the past three maps are going to be the only rounds they win all night. Jacob! <laughs> that's rude. As a new guy, you're very rude. And you know what? I, I don't like that. I can take that. You, we're going to put you in timeout. That. And while you're in timeout, we're going to toss this over for map number two. Stokes and Blue, take it away. Thank you very much, Belly. And while the analysts were breaking down things, Stokes and I were able to do a little bit of research. I was doing my research, just a moment. I was doing my research, at least on my new Acer Predator Helios 700. I know it's not on right now, just ignore that. This thing is an absolute beast. I have been loving it ever since I got it about a week or two ago. I've actually been, this is not, this is absolutely the truth. I have been eagerly awaiting for the season to end so that I can replace my primary computer with this thing because it is more powerful than my current desktop. It has an i9 inside of it, a desktop level 2080, 32 gigabytes of RAM. You need any sort of power capability, this thing has it. So if you're in the neighborhood for a new laptop or even a desktop replacement, go ahead and check it out. It's the Acer Predator Helios 700. Whoa. That was a good one, heck right? Of a, he, yeah, heck of, heck of a... Came uh, off the top of my head, uh, too. I didn't even rehearse that one. I, you know what? Props to you, but I, but you. I got to say I gotta say this before we jump back into this match. Some, somebody's got to fire that Caliber Jacob guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> Uh, but I, listen, listen, I really do hope that Mirage gets his uh, gets, you know, some rounds here, but going into coastline and what I saw earlier laying in bed watching them play SSG, there's a reason that I rolled over and went back to sleep. So uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. I really hope that it's better. I don't know really what else to say. Uh, Mirage is going to ban Asher. I think that that's a really good pickup, be mainly because it is coastline. Uh, it, let's be honest, this is going to be pretty much TDM uh, from a lot of these Disrupt members, so. All right, guys, well, let's see how well things will look to pan themselves out for Mirage as they were very much looking to get back into the series with this, but early results don't necessarily make things look great for them. We'll have to see if there was any time for improvement against Disrupt, of course, obviously a much more different opponent than the team that they faced earlier. 
taking a look now ace is going to be the first ban from them disrupts also going to ban out maestro following suit so i like frag heavy operators getting knocked out here maestro included in that pool by the way for those of you who we're wondering and then we'll have the final operator band come up in a moment valkyrie as well a trend that we carried over from the previous map and one that i talked about of course has been increasing in popularity over the past few months yeah valk is actually the uh, shared defender band that both of these teams really really like so kind of expected that one to you know happen throughout this entire series the offensive bands though that was the thing that i don't think either of us expected especially with the ash band just kind of a spot band towards disrupt trying to pull out the rug from under them especially in njr's side of things i mean he really really likes a ash as an operator and he had a lot of really good influence over the rounds with her in that previous map so going into coastline not the worst band in the world mirage is going to be starting defense which coastline only map in the entire map pool right now that is mostly offensive sided so uh i, I usually like to call it the teeter-totter because it really does depend on you know the two teams that are playing it but Defenders you know just for giggles boss, we will say that disrupt back. is going to be starting on the favorite side all right so mirage like Stitz is mentioning here starting out on defense and getting themselves started out on the Oh, excuse me, the lower hold as well here. It's service and kitchen. Wait a minute, think of the name of that site for some reason. But anyway, uh, going to be holding themselves out here. As we take a look at their operator lineup, nothing too surprising coming into the fold here. Flynn on the smoke, most notably, of course, going to be playing in the site closer towards barrels. Will probably be a bit of a setup towards him at this half wall by the chassis too. He'll be the main player looking to try and delay if he has the capability to. And then you've got your usual, of course, you know, we've got Jaeger back into the fold. So he's going to be brought back in here now as well. On top of the well, my combo, that's once again going to be a massive annoyance that disrupt will have to deal with at least for this half and then we've got your usual mira and of course the malusi on top of that as well yeah some really, really strong to what the loading Ooh. loading yeah yeah chase you can't you can't be doing that that's uh all right listen let's even caught that let's, one let's, on camera yeah. man let's uh, let's just ignore that just the mirage has had a hard enough day guys okay listen i'm looking at you redditors all right you better calm down right now so <laughs> disrupt and uh mirage so far throughout this series though it's really it has been the disrupt train that's what we've seen uh, so far but going into coastline this is the map where i really do feel as though mirage can step up i know that obviously we've been doom and gloom for the you know last you know 20 minutes whether it be the analyst desk or us but this is the only map inside of this map pool that uh, disrupt does not have a win on right now uh, with, the, with the last two that are remaining oregon is definitely not going to be the greatest thing but mirage two and one only losing to ssg earlier on today so we could have a good showing but as of right now not starting off the greatest loading getting picked off pretty early by shuttle but definitely exchanging some damage disrupt getting themselves off to a booming start taking some very early map control that we didn't get to talk about either they were inside of sunrise i think less than 20 seconds after they were let out of spawn here so already trying to put the pressure on a mirage very very quickly you can see of course flynn getting a little bit of pressure as the yana drone is going to be sent in the kitchen window at him very easily dispatched of course and that's also after he was able to pick up the trade from a moment ago we are going to see that mag did actually nearly take out the jaeger silent as it gets drawn closer to him but he reads out what's happening and quickly gets himself out of what could have been a very very bad position at least going off the info the ui was giving him rest of disrupt very very focused on this kitchen window right now but you can see there's a massive amount of defender sided utility in the way trying to stop this from being accessible to the attackers finally they're able to get a frag grenade through which deals with that barricade arguably the most worrisome thing they would have had to deal with but now they still have to get past the player which is inside of here and more than likely it's not just one flynn holding the back end of this yes but there's also at least one other player still deeper in barrels on disrupt Mostly focused on that kitchen execute, as you were saying. Some good Enzo here with the Yana as Retro runs in, but they still have a lot to worry about here from the Mirage side. I mean, we still have players staying upstairs in this sub minute. There, there could possibly be rotations or anything to happen to disrupt right now. So it's going to be down to the crossfire and the execute to try and make this happen. Pay attention to where that case is going as well. Shuttle going to adjust his way all the way over to service. So Mirage needing to now battle back. Here comes the execute. Nice trade here from Flynn at range with that SMG 11, but Retro Retro now inside of sight, takes down Zilchi, and, well, seems as though the entire shop's been stolen. Mirage now have to battle their way back in as Silent and Quartz are the only two remaining members, and they're both off-site. That was actually a super unfortunate one-for-one for, one for Flynn as it took him out. Yeah, but he also got the revenge on the player in the back. It's unfortunate the player in the back that he killed was pretty much an inconsequential kill at that point. Reed was not in a power position to do anything else except kill Flynn. 
So him getting that frag is pretty much the only job he needed to do for the rest of the round. His teammates were able to flood the site after that kill. And now we're stuck in this situation with Silent left alone in the 1v3 scenario. Doesn't that seem to have a lot of great intel either. He's got the lockdown onto at least one player, NJR there. But unfortunately, still can't win out the fight. The mobility of NJR is a bit too much to deal with. He's able to line up the headshot to close out the first round of the map here for Disrupt. Yeah, this is going to be the major problem. Uh, I mean, just because you banned Ash doesn't mean that NJR is all of a sudden going to go silently into the night. So, uh, I mean, he's just going to jump on another operator with a really good gun and probably get some more frags. And that's exactly what we've seen inside of this last round. I mean, th I think that Disrupt overall in that last round was firing on all cylinders. It might have been one of the best offenses that we've seen from them uh, throughout this entire series so far. I mean, like the, the other offenses weren't necessarily bad. It's just that one was... Uh, handled a lot cleaner than the other ones were. We saw a really good execute, good handling of the situation inside of Kitchen, and they never let it get too far ahead of them to where Mirage could battle back. And when the execute came onto site, it came very fast, very hard, and they were able to get that diffuser down all because of that, leaving the last two remaining Mirage members stranded off site. So for Mirage, I mean, again, it's just, I mean, basically par for the course for what we've seen today. I mean, like I'm getting flashbacks from Coastline earlier on now from these executes from SS G and just winning out these gunfights. I, I, I honestly don't really know what the disconnect is right now for Mirage. It really just seems to be these early engagements just aren't falling their way. Mirage are going to continue to avoid the upstairs sites as well. We'll instead sink themselves into a hold at double bars next. This is probably the most far out site that we'll play on in regards to whether Disrupt is going to be ready to attack it or not. But considering it's coastline, I highly doubt that's going to be much of an obstacle for the Disrupt roster. You can also see, of course, the double reinforcement sitting on the primary wall there. Very doubtful that anybody from Mirage will hold on the inside. So you've got the usual peppering of the outer courtyard wall too, which allows for anyone on Mirage to play out into the you know kind of inner donut here and allow for them to fire into the site should Disrupt choose to take it. What flavor is it? <laughs> what donut? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Boston cream. Ooh. That's my that, hey, that's a. Mm, mm. It doesn't you really got make me sense there. considering the shape of the map, but <laughs> it'll just call the, yeah. the courtyards the creamy center of this donut for the time being. Uh, on the East Coast, did they call them Long Johns as well? That's what they call them in the Midwest. Uh, they call them Long Johns. I don't Johns. think I've heard them called Long Johns before. I think. <sighs> That's some, that's some white people stuff, man. I'm sorry. Apologies Boston about that. Cream. <laughs> oh, man. I just exposed Iowa so much. Apologies, guys. <laughs> uh, well, well, Mirage battling back inside a double bar. It's been actually pretty slow beginnings here for Disrupt. They've more or less just, uh, you know, worked their way around the outside of the map and are starting to work their way through Mudroom. They have some, you know, holes here now, so Zilchi's not going to be able to play next to the bomb chassis how he wants. And this is usually a position we see held by a lot of teams, usually that smoke player. But now Mirage actually with the first big impact here, NJR off the board. Oh, Silent will be able to find that pick there. And as Stokes said, it'll be against NJR. So the Zofia will be removed. Not entirely sure where that kill went down. Looks like it might have been over at Top Hookah or somewhere in that neighborhood. Based off of the current position of the killer. And that would, I believe, be correct. I have no idea. The hard idea one to track down. I, I see, actually, <laughs> no, I see the body. He was, yeah, yeah. It's, he's, he's on the left there. He, he got shot from the. The hookah window. You can see the Where's body. Where's Waldo? There yeah, he is. Yeah, right there, All right. the screen. Sorry, it took me a minute to like describe everything, but we got it, folks. And now they're gonna be able to get oh. another one. And we just <laughs> we just ruined the observer's day. Made him miss another kill. Quartz is gonna be able to find the next one here. Impact goes over to try and draw his opponent's aim, but it's not gonna work. Shuttle is not oh. only gonna get that one, but he uses the hole his opponent just opened up to pick up another one as well. That's loading down also and disrupt. They've spun it back around into an even 3v3, and they still have just under a minute to take the site. Oh, they had to be feeling really, really good about that pinch there just for a second. They make the line of sight all the way to VIP. You start pressuring him from the bathroom door, and then Shuttle just kills both of you. Uh, I mean, there's, there's really no way to battle back from that. I mean, that is just skill as skill gets. Silent with a double kill now as well, matching Shuttle's energy, and this is what we like to see. We need to see Silent just go off the hinges here and try and take down as many of these members as possible. Again, it's coastline. It's going to be a hell in a cell the entire time. You're going to always be taking these gunfights. So to have some 
someone that's on fire in that way is going to be really, really strong for Mirage. Down to Retro and Shuttle now with only 15 seconds remaining. Disrupt have to try and force their way into sight. And with Shuttle upstairs, he's just going to battle his way right inside of the actual hookah area. Start sledging the floor, but oh no, it already seems as though Retro's been down. Case now gone. And with a very nice position here from Silent, he takes down Shuttle as he tries to battle down cool vibes. No real positioning, unfortunately, for the players on Disrupt to play off of there in the late round, especially as they got down to the 2v3 scenario. Seemed like they were kind of at a lack of intel as well off of that last Yana drone that ended up going in. You only have intel on the players sitting behind the barricade and away from that. Didn't really seem like they were really secure on the positions of any of the other defenders at that point. So didn't feel too courageous to try and go for a push, but ultimately time forced that upon them. And they were still not able to make the overall execute that successful, leading to a pretty nice hold there for Mirage. That on top of the nice early picks, which have been absent from them for a large, you know, for a massive gap in rounds now, helped out quite a bit in making sure Mirage was finally able to control a round for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. But I think you mostly have to chalk it up to Silent and what he was able to provide inside of that round. And that's why I'm going to just back up this and just make sure that this has been doubled up on. You need to let Silent off the leash here. Just let Silent do what he wants and just see how large of an impact he can possibly make for Mirage. Because if he can continue to get these triple kills, double kills throughout these rest of these rounds, especially on this defensive half, Mirage, Mirage have a really, really good chance of winning this game and pushing us to Oregon. Another wave of bans out there real quick. It's been going crazy the past couple days. Yeah, for... that's right, not Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> there, was a, there was a DDoS wave earlier, too, when Intero and Kicks were casting. I saw that as well. People still DDoS? Apparently, man. There was like, In 2020? There was like, a, there was like a list of 20 names, at least, that went by there a moment ago. So oh, that there were quite a few DDoSers. Deplorable. Anyway, taking a look at this setup, it's going to be a bit of an unorthodox setup as we don't very often go to this site. Mirage wants to give us a treat, though, and we are indeed going to go into theater for our next hold here. That is interesting enough. Also, the first upstairs defense that we're going to see for Mirage. We have yet to go to the most played site on this map, which is over in Hook and Billiards. Could just be trying to throw Disrupt off. Could just be playing their own game. Who knows? We'll have to see what it well, what possibly happens for the squad. But Silent going to be on the forefront once again with Zilchi as they're holding down Hookah. Some ADSs in tandem as well as some Wamai discs. So very spread hold here for Mirage. I like what I'm seeing, but this could be handled quite well from Disrupt. They do have hard destruction along for the ride and the likes of the Habana. This is an operator that we see quite often on this map. Only really repre uh, replaced with that ace. We could have a possible run out here and Loading's going to get one for free as J9's taken down. And that's the Thatcher off the board. That is such an important operator to remove early on here for Mirage. Especially against this site take too. Normally wouldn't be so much of the case here, but so the one where Hard Breach is a little bit less optional than some of the other sites, and definitely need to try and open up more avenues of attack if you have the option to do so. Disrupt, of course, right now, primarily looking for that trade. They'll get some good damage onto loading. Not enough to get the confirm, though, but Retro also just saw the second player. He knows there's two in Kitchen right now. Mirage do not know that both of those players have been spotted. They probably assume one at the most has kind of been found out here. But regardless, that info is not going to translate to too much, at least not immediately. But we can see NJR starting to rotate down now as well and this is when this could turn into something else because you've also got shuttle on the pinch here too so they know they've got two players contained somewhere on the inside just whether they can properly execute on them or not now we'll see how it works out as shuttle working his way inside of bathroom retro is going to get taken down but nj with the refrag on the loading so nice trades here but oh great patience by shuttle to take down silent inside of kegs now down to the three versus three with only a minute remaining k still down across the map so some good stuff happening for Mirage, but obviously some good stuff happening for Disrupt as well. Flynn going to adjust over into VIP, and they've got a lot going on on site. So many angles that Disrupt are going to have to worry about, and that's exactly what Mirage wanted with this setup. With all of these holes open, now Disrupt has so many angles, obviously, once again, to worry about that walking into site is just going to be a big problem, especially since they don't have any intel. Flynn with a nice pickup across, I believe, the opening yes. to take down NJR. That's some long range work with that smg 11. it's beautiful stuff from flynn and overall this setup has to be so annoying to play against if you're disrupt right now as stokes is mentioning so many angles where a member of mirage could peek on you at any given time and that's how flynn was able to pick up that kill Flynn's so close to possibly getting another one for himself right there but quartz is gonna find it instead and flynn will have to finish things off here 
as he takes down Shuttle, the last man standing for Disrupt, and nets his team a second round, beautifully played on the theater site by Mirage. No, oh, there's one thing... If, if there's one thing that you can't take away from Flynn, it's his SMG 11 play. That guy has it on lock. Even to the point where I think at one moment in time, Young said that he was one of the best SMG 11 players that he's ever seen. And that's coming from one of the best supports that I know. Like in his, in the history of Rainbow Six Siege. So that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. Some rounds on the board now for Mirage. Matching the same amount of rounds that they had from the previous map. So it's looking good right now. This is the first time that they've had the lead in this entire series so far as well. So Mirage on a really good note right now. And obviously they're feeling good about it. Six pick coming in. Loading's off of the pulse over to the Oryx. They're definitely thriving in the Rome game right now. That last round has a little bit of an asterisk mark on that point, considering what happened at the kitchen with that little pinch that went against them, which was beautifully done by Disrupt, by the way, to just lock those players out of being able to do anything. But even so, right, still able to go one for one on one of those kills there and try to bring things back under their control, which set up the events of the late round because that site had so many angles that the defenders could just randomly swing from and more than likely get an angle onto at least somebody from Disrupt. It was just, it was like Mirage, or excuse me, not Mirage. Uh, Disrupt was kind of playing whack-a-mole there to a certain extent. And unfortunately they were losing <laughs> as they couldn't figure out where the players are going to pop up from, especially with that nice kill that Flynn got in VIP all the way across into luggage. Okay, well, Disrupt now out on the field and they've got a lot of work to be done. These early picks hindering them quite often inside of Coastland so far, and that's really what needs to change. So lean that onto the Intel game and see if they can try and get something to work here. Uh, granted, once again, just like what Blue was talking about, that last little instance with the pinch inside a kitchen just really didn't fall to their side of the fence. So it wasn't necessarily a botch by them. It was just Mirage being that much better in that instance. So we'll see if that works out well for them once again here. But Disrupt still need to try and get these early entry kills. They know that loading's inside of Aqua now. That hatch has been open, but some vertical play now for loading, but Give more or less just a scare tactic onto NJR. <laughs> Flynn with a nice pickup onto J9, though. Once again, the Sniper 11 from downtown. I told you guys, you got to <laughs> respect it. All the way from Kitchen, this man is hitting shots looking like Steph Curry deep on the key. Well, Reed Retro might be the next to step up to the plate and challenge that SMG 11. That's assuming, of course, that Flynn even wants to take a second fight here. He's at under 50 HP now from the previous exchange, so he needs to be a little bit careful about how much of himself he tries to give away. He uh, just angrily throwing a drone at the table there for a moment as he scopes back in, but that drone will come into play more than likely over the next few seconds once he gets an opportunity to properly use it. More than likely to suss out where Flynn is currently hiding at, but also probably used to clear out some of the other areas like blue, which I don't think they're currently controlling. They have to watch out for that as well. Half the round gone by, a pretty active round too here because of Mirage's early shenanigans, so Disrupt still have a lot of work to do. And thankfully, they still have a good amount of time to do it, but they also need to be cautious in their work here because of players like Loading and even players like Silent who have yet to do much in this round, but still an undealt with factor on parts of the map that Disrupt are looking to get control over. Exactly. And I think that this slow, you know, low point here for Disrupt really is from that pick on a J9 once again. 0-0-4 right now, and losing your Thatcher early is never a good thing. You're not able to get rid of a lot of electronics that you had accounted for using that Thatcher. But obviously, since he's off the board, big problems now for Disrupt, especially with loading making it even more difficult as he takes down Shuttle. That's the top frag now gone, all left up to the remaining members of Disrupt with only 45 seconds remaining, and they really haven't even gotten any real work done on site. I mean, we still have deployable shields inside of the hallway right now for Kitchen. Finally gonna get rid of that, though, but that's not going to slow down Mirage at all. Eventually working their way back into Bathroom, Zilch is gonna take quite a bit of damage, but still have to worry about Flynn inside of side as he takes down NJ. Already goes for three right there onto the triple last one being retro he cleans up flynn but it doesn't even matter mirage all over the board as they claim round four looking a whole hell of a lot more like ssg than mirage from that last series great team play from mirage right there the best part about that too is no massive overreactions from any of their players nobody pushing beyond the limits of what they were trying to hold especially over in the lobby department we had two to three players holding there I was very surprised that no one tried to take a fight or just by accident ended up peeking into one of the POVs of one of the DG members because that was a very long time that at the minimum guys like, you know, like NJR, uh, yeah, NJR and J9, whoever was over there at the time, I believe it was NJR, uh, trying to look for that pick for so long, I believe again, specifically Silent, but never really able to get an angle onto him. And that just forced them into the site or at least forced them to try and rotate out 
pretty much into Flynn's POV, where he picks up kill after kill after kill and just slowly but surely destroys any hope of Disrupt getting a win on that round. Yeah, really, really strong stuff. But again, you got to chalk it up to the site players there. Flynn taking three yeah. separate engagements with that SMG 11 and winning out every single one of them. Guys, check it out. Smoke player on site hasn't even touched anything farther than that. Eight, one, and two right now. That's what you want from a site player right there. That is some incredible stat work uh, going through four rounds. I mean, that, that's a 2.0 KPR right now for Flynn. So... Walking into double bar here, Disrupt not having a great showing when it came to this site strictly because they weren't really allowed to handle mud how they wanted to. They tried to worry about the roam game there from Mirage, but they continually got them picked off. So we'll see if the Lion helps with this at all. We saw J9 go away from the Thatcher. I personally think that this is a really good choice because Lion's going to keep these roaming operators locked down and allow Disrupt to have influence over them and instead of allowing them to move around the map the entire time. At a minimum, this should also allow for a disrupt to get quicker control over the top floor which going against these downstairs sites is going to be a pretty important piece as well i think that's another thing that disrupt has been missing despite the sledge being brought quite often is they haven't really been able to have enough time to set up those massive top down angles and potentially get the one to two kills that will often come with that when you have the time to set up and really just do all sorts of reconstruction on the floor work there uh disrupt has rarely had the luxury of that amount of time to do that and that's been one reason why they've been forced into a lot of kind of awkward engagements on site where they're also down by about you know anywhere from like two to four players depending on the round exactly exactly so Jumping into these things now, Disrupt actually going for an office execute here instead. Mirage not really having any battle in this, so they know that something's going on in a part of the map that they don't have any control over. You can see Malusi walking up to the security door now, but I don't believe that they know that NGR's laying on the floor and they don't load and gets taken down. It's a, uh, the Mozzie instead of the Malusi as Quartz doubled back onto White Stairs. But now they know that there's some presence from Disrupt on this side of the map. It's all up to Mirage to know how to act now as their man down. Quartz should know that his position's already kind of obvious to NGR given the footstep noise he would have made going up the stairs a couple seconds ago. But regardless, trying to fish it out right now, just pulling the drone more than anything else and hoping that there's a swing from the Zofia. It would be very unwise to do so because now Silent is in this position too. Although he's on courtyard now because there's trouble brewing in the actual site. J90 finds success and another entry here against Zilchi, who is holding deeper towards Sunrise on the rotate. NJR now starts to counter out the other players from the front lobby. That's going to be Quartz going down. Flynn with a beautiful shot yet again here. Deletes Retro and starts to bring the numbers a little bit more under Barrage's control, but we're not there just yet. Still down a player here. Him and Silent from back over towards front lobby need to make up the difference, and they're doing it. Silent gets himself yet another kill. It's going to take some heat as he falls back here. It's only about 25 of his HP, though, so not a massive deal at this point in the round. As up to this point, it's up to Disrupt to make the next move here. Flynn showing up once again with that SMG 11. Does a little bit of damage over onto J9. Not a massive amount, mind you, but... Still enough to get him to fall back even temporarily. Silent does the same thing, just pecking at him one by one, bullet by bullet, bringing their HP down. Finally, J9 is just going to say, screw it and go in, try to make the plant effort all on his own. Shuttle is going to try to support, but no, they lose the planter. Silent swings from the lobby yet again and takes out J9. Now everything's on to Shuttle. He's only got 14 seconds left. He has no way to battle out of this box. He's just going to swing it down Silent. Now all he's got to do is kill Flynn, but he's stuck in the Banshee. Flynn will have an easy close out in the 1v1 and Mirage take the round instead. I can tell you right now, this man is screaming his absolute head off. <laughs> Flynn is, he's the raid boss right now of Mirage. He's, he will be damned if this team goes out the same way they went last time. 4-1 right now on the defensive half for Mirage. They're looking so good. And let me tell you, the way they played that last engagement, that 2v2, that is the difference between a good team and a great team. The comms there between Flynn and Silent, how they played that, their utility usage, everything down to how they held their crossfires and and how Flynn switched back and forth on opposite ends of the site to really switch up where Disrupt knew where he was. He knew they lacked that intel, and he utilized that inside of those gunfights. That was some extreme stuff from Mirage to lock that up and win that in the clutch. Great stuff by them. We're headed towards Hookah now with yet another six pick. We're bringing in Vigil for some fun. I like what I'm seeing here. Mirage really starting to come into their own here on Coastline. 
and able to develop quite a lead regardless of the outcome of round number six here from the defensive half of this map disrupt still have an opportunity to battle back into it of course but those chances are slim looking at the way the last couple of rounds have gone finally mirage is going to put themselves as well up into hookah billiards i believe they've yet to defend this site if my memory's correct on that so this will be the first time they jump onto it but it's also the site that's most commonly played out first or second so disrupt have a lot of tape on this one a lot of potential strats in their back pocket it's maybe a round where they can funnel themselves into a second round overall on the scoreboard here but at the same time mirage is looking hot right now so they may have that 5-1 lead coming up as well i have n i haven't seen stats like this from like a hard anchor hard support player in quite some time like I, I promise you folks i promise you for the guys that like no flynn and i it's not just because we're friends like 10-2 and 2 no bias, as a course. hard as a uh, i mean whatever but like <laughs> the, the the thing is is like 10-2 two and 2 as an smg 11 thermite man that you don't see that every single day like he is really putting everything on the line for this team right now and you guys need to know that because this is this is something that you don't see once again every single day so disrupt now out and onto the field here uh, doing some pretty good work early game. Their drone economy, not that strong right now. They're already down three drones, and that could be a really big problem for them, mainly because they are playing... Uh Obviously, like a lot of things going on with the lineup for Mirage, but Mute and Vigil are going to give them a lot of problems the less drones that they have. I mean, granted, they actually, no, I'm going to put those words right back in my mouth. J9's back on the Thatcher. I assume that they would stick with the Lion, but went against the grain instead loading picking up the vigil just because well i mean he assumed that the six pick was going to come in just never happened so the hold up front is kind of interesting right now from mirage we have like a stack of three players over in that neighborhood it looks like some of them are rotating now because up until a few seconds ago it did look like kind of a scary over commitment of players however i do believe mirage has gotten the message and is starting to put those players closer to sight as we're seeing a lot of the presence from disrupt shift itself in from vip first retro is actually going to get the first kill from the roof Catching a player trying to move towards that VIP door, actually. A nice catch as the bait works out great. Gets someone into the hallway to take a fight. And then opens up an opportunity for a player on the roof to take them out via crossfire. Now, the problem is also with this breach is they do have to deal with crossfire from the inside of the site. And more than anything, that means they're going to have to deal with this from Flynn. As he's swinging in here, trying to do little bits of damage. Now, it's not actually working out too great for him right now. He's been brought down to just over 25 HP. And he's only returned about, you know, right under 25 on the NJR here. So... Let's be very careful about trying that again. Loading also going to get cornered in the back of Aqua. He'll be taken down. Flynn also going to be finished off by NJR2. Loading still down here at the bottom of office. I don't believe anybody will be able to retrieve him. Well, the raid boss now down. It's all left up to Quartz and Silent as obviously loading's been down inside of office, but the drone economy not strong for Disrupt at all at this point. There's only two drones left alive for Disrupt and they're more than likely on flank. So all of this is going to be face checking and gunfights. And this is where Quartz and Silent thrive. So if they're allowed to have any influence over the surroundings last 30 seconds, this could be a really big problem for Disrupt. This execute needs to happen now and they need to get one of them killed. Quartz with quite a bit of damage from the roof plant now going down inside of aqua here silent worried about the hookah player takes down reed but oh oh no it's actually been planted i assume that they got it but he immediately hits the prone retro takes down quartz it's all left up to silent in a one versus four but it's all for not as disrupt pick up their second round and split their offense to four much more familiar setting for disrupt to play against finally and on top of that was able to control the roam presence from the mirage roster a lot more convincingly in that round especially with the way they were able to pinch from the vip hallways from that point forward also a lot more one fights just in general that time and actual direct 1v1s which was kind of the difference maker for quite a few of the previous rounds and with a lot of that going into their favor disrupt are able to finally negotiate a second round for themselves but that's it that's all they get out of the first half on attack now they go to defense where they have to make up the difference to win at least two rounds to tie it up and need at least five just within this half to close it out in regulation so you want the good news or the bad news i'll oh, give you both okay so Don't good news it. Disrupt, you know, Disrupt really, really have a chance to, still to close this out. You know, 4-2, not the worst thing in the world. They showed some, you know, good stuff on their offense. I think that defense is going to work a little bit better for them. But bad news is for Mirage fans, Flynn no longer has an SMG 11. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I would be surprised if he got a kill for the rest of the time, to be honest with you. So I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. They could give him one, technically. Well, funny enough, they put him on Zofia. You never see that. <laughs> 
And he's still got the fuser too. So look at him, how nice. Oh man, dude, <laughs> he's he's doing. He, he is Mirage. Like there's there's no one else there. He's just doing it all. <laughs> Oh my goodness. See how Fragger Flynn shows up here today. <laughs> Fragger Flynn. <laughs> uh, he's going to be able to step up to the plate, add more to the kill counter here. Like we talked about, he's still leading his team by a pretty good margin. Him and Silent combined have a massive number of kills right now. 17 just between the two of them. That's compared to six on the entire rest of the team. They're doing a lot of the heavy lifting right now. That's not necessarily a good thing, though, to say, is that could also lead, especially on attack, into situations where if those two players go down, the rest of the team really isn't able to do much the rest of the round. And that's, you know, been a, that's a thing in pretty much every single competitive esport. So Mirage will need to be a little bit careful of that if someone else isn't going to be able to step up to make up the difference here on attack. I guess the real question is, what's the pacing going to be like on attack? Because Silent and, uh, well, actually, excuse me, Mirage, uh, bringing a lot of intel gang here. I mean, we're going to have the Yana in play as well as the Jackal. Good soft destruction as well as grenades. I mean, they are basically a Swiss Army knife right now. They can do whatever they really need to in order to get onto site. The only thing that they might get caught off guard with is some burn or an early pick. And it's going to be loading once again, followed suit by Quartz. So again, two of the bottom fraggers off the board. Flynn and Silent still alive, but... As you were saying, it has to be a whole team effort here. Otherwise, you're going to continue to have some major problems. Down to a 5e3 right within the first minute and a half of the round. Certainly not the greatest signs for Mirage. And even some respect given by that same roster to their opponent for those shots. Quartz gives out the NS to his opponent who just took him down there. A lot of investment going on the defender utility towards that kitchen window once again. As they are going to be trying to avoid any sort of effort from getting pushed in on the other side. You can see moment the player behind that barricade under a lot of stress due to that utility but still maintaining and as far as i can tell still has the barricade to play behind as well as we'll get a whole load of new bands coming up there once again for like four different categories too get out get him out i, I just want to play ranked again i just want to play ranked again Fr flynn's gonna take down j9 nice way to start this off but still a really long road ahead of them they have control of the double bar area flynn going to continue to work the kitchen window this is where they want to plant but we need to see some crossfires coming in here for mirage silent actually working the opposite end of the map into security i don't even know if they know that he's here right now That's awkward. that is every Only single pellet in a single stack i have never seen that before in my entire life so <laughs> silent trying to get rid of i assume the mirror window over on kegs goes for it again but this is probably going to get dealt with as reed still sitting here inside of the lobby is he going to get rid of those actually no shuttle tells him to leave it up and actually just play for his life here because they don't have any intel on this positioning so reed's actually going to be able to assist them here picks up silent but immediately refragged by zilchi they still have a chance but steps right into the line of sights as flynn tries to bully his way in through service but doesn't happen retro with a thank you come again and disrupt back on the board that's right i think it responds to the ns from earlier on in the round there because he got that kill earlier on and away from that oh my bad toxicity <laughs> i'll just just make sure everybody knows and away from that of course uh, we saw quite a bit of aggression that time especially in the early round from disrupt shuttle's initial kill in fact comes i believe it might have been from a run out to service store because i know he ended up reapplying the barricade after the fact so i don't know if he fully ran out or just had a nice barricade hit to be able to line up that angle but right at the start players from disrupt wanting to put a punch into the mirage roster for within the first couple seconds of the round and they were certainly able to do that like we said bringing it down to a 5v3 within the first couple seconds and then able to kind of carry that advantage forward into that chaotic gunfight at the end which they also controlled without too much effort disrupt are looking really really strong on this defense you got to be really happy for the squad and uh what they've been able to produce throughout this uh, series so far really i mean uh, but over on the Mirage camp, I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta really be feeling for Forest Folder coach because uh, they've been able to produce. But the problem is, especially inside of that last round, Mirage just did not have enough man count when it came to the actual execute time. Those two early picks were the highlight of that round for Disrupt. At that point in time, it was practically one. They just had to kind of sit there, not exactly on their hands, stay gun up, but just sit there, wait to see how Mirage acted, and then counter it once it came through. If Mirage actually kept man count you know going into that execute period or even keeping things equal i think mirage have a really really good chance of closing things out here on coastline i mean losing quartz and loading that early on is always going to give you the, uh, like that amount of problems you know what i mean so 
Uh, walking into this next round, though, I really, really want to see if they can be a little bit more dynamic in their early game and try and get some of these early picks here. Because what we saw from that previous round wasn't exactly courts and loading going for those early picks. It was disrupt being more proactive than reactive. All right, guys. Well, into round number eight here. Mirage looking to maintain their advantage. Slowly slipping away from them. Only just recently started to slip away, though. Still a nice opportunity to re-grasp it here against the Hookah Billiards attack, a site which they should be very, very well familiar with. But this is also the site where we saw one of the most convincing attacking wins from Disrupt. We'll see how well that will translate to their own defensive half here. Now, a lot of presence from Mirage already down below, which is going to be a little bit dangerous for players like Reed, who are trying to hang out in the sites. You can see, of course, there's a little bit of work from Zilchi there. There's some work to throw out the shotgun right below where reed just was but that info is out of date he gets plenty of warning when his foots get tracked which i'm assuming is how they caught him in the first place and he's given that extra time to fall back outside where obviously things are going to look a lot safer for him over here towards cool vibes nice start so far for mirage very slow beginnings here not not as uh you know action-packed as we've expected from these previous rounds but Disrupt still being quite patient as they've got a really nice hold across this entire top floor here. And that's exactly why it seems as though Mirage has went downstairs. Don't want to try and deal with this horizontal hold from Disrupt. They want to just try and handle Hookah and then go for that plant. But the M590 bags one, but oh, oh my what? goodness gracious, the amount of kills that just happened from one frag grenade. That was, uh, you just set off a tactical nuke even inside here, of Cool Vibes. It? it was, it was, it fell in his lap he got downed and then it just murdered oh. everyone i yeah so I, I yeah he just there was a nuke that just went off on cool vibes that was really it man what a play from the shotgunner though sitting on the other side of the equation for disrupt finding that's a way to trade impact. yourself right yeah <laughs> unfortunately just not going to get credit for it in the stats ultimately we could see Sion, of course try to panic spray against that smoke charge but it's not going to work out i'll try to deny the plant with this other one i don't know if it's going to be close enough to courts or not no definitely not the case he's able to make it out but at low hp oh no he gets traded on the way out because of the remaining smoke in the doorway they're already going to jump on the counter defuse zilchi is racing to try and jump on it but it's too late a run out from njr saves the counter defuse and allows for disrupt to pick up round number eight well, Disrupt, again, just doing a really, really good job of allowing uh, Mirage to set pace and then adapting in the mid game to what Mirage are doing. I think that this is so far on this defensive side, really well played from Disrupt. It's really up to Mirage to try and battle through this. Again, they are setting pace, but it's that Disrupt are just there to counteract them every single time that they attempt to go for things, as well as you kind of got to chalk it up to just a little bit of RNG there on Cool Vibes because, again, you don't see that every single day. I feel like I've said that so many times today. Mirage is just, I guess that's exactly what their name implies. Mirage, they're, they're see-through, they're a ghost. There's so many things that are happening to this team that shouldn't happen. I don't know what else to really say. I mean, Disrupt playing some very, very solid Siege. It just seems like the entire world is, well as, you know, another dimension are against Mirage right now because a frag grenade like that just does not happen. Bit of an unlucky round to say the least for Mirage just there. But Disrupt will take that and now be able to tie the game back up at 4-4. Four to four. Keep in mind, of course, Disrupt does also currently hold the series advantage. They only need this map to close down the series, keep their own qualification contentions alive, and knock Mirage out of this qualifier for the time being. Better luck next time for them. But Mirage do not want that. They said themselves they do not want to lose both of their initial games. They want to be able to make it further. Well, now they have to rally themselves as they're at risk of falling behind yet again on map number two here. And a fallback, which they may not be able to come back from. So let's see if Mirage is going to be able to step up to the plate and win themselves another round here against the bar defenses. Didn't they really, really need to? It's going to be a desperate attempt for Mirage to try and make this happen. But... I mean, the good news is, is that there are some striking similarities between their setup, but Disrupt have extended more into Kitchen than we saw Mirage initially do. So we'll see how Mirage wants to go about handling this. We could see a top down clear here, but again, this is going to be mostly up to Mirage. The only reason I'm expecting that is because that sledge is in play for Quartz, but we touched on it on the analyst desk. There isn't necessarily something else that Quartz really plays. So just because sledge is here doesn't mean that there's always going to be vertical control. But as we have Zilchi and Quartz standing outside, of hookah is exactly what we're going to get first sledge down here is uh we've already gotten some control upstairs just need to actually walk in and get it fully fledged out 
Going to see a nice Nitro Cell toss from the Disrupt roster. I was a little bit confused as to what was going on there for J9, but got a great idea of it now. It's going to down Quartz, but it won't fully take him out just yet, meaning that there is a possibility for him to get revived. They're doing it right now, but they got to watch out for this. J9 still has the pulse in play. Thankfully, the revive happens just in the nick of time as they're not only able to get that player out, but the one who revived him also gets out while still being relatively unscathed. That'll be Zilchi, I believe, that revives him and only takes one or two bullets for his trouble. Silence is in the meantime going to be able to take out Reed here, bring this down to a 5v4, and now finally confirming the first kill against a Disrupt member. Well, they really, really needed Quartz to stay alive there. So very strong stuff for Mirage as they were allowed to pick him up because they needed that hammer for all of this soft destruction. Without him, you only have Flynn and Zilchi to handle a lot of this bulk workload. So NJR adjusting himself down white stairs in tandem with shuttles. They're trying to handle the lobby area here on coastline. Mirage doing quite a good job of wrapping around the site, but haven't had too much site pressure just yet. Initial beginnings here for the hard destruction as their main focus is going to be blue bar. While Quartz maintains that top control through those vertical uh, holes that he made with that sledgehammer. So we'll see if they're able to get another pick here to try and have some more influence on this late round because they desperately need it, but it's DG to fire back now. Botch grenade there from Quartz, and that's going to be his last one as Retro... Once again, taken down silent. So hard destruction off the board, but they've already got the hard destruction done. They just need the case to actually get inside of the site. Yeah, Flynn more than anything just needs a safety call so that he can move in and try to commit himself to the plan. Mirage members also will need to clear out the lobby and whatnot as well here to make sure that Flynn doesn't take additional shots against him. But Retro sees what's happening. He's constantly scoped in on Flynn's POV, trying to make sure that he does not get access to the site. Zilchi in the meanwhile was able to find some success. He moves in, takes out Shuttle. That's the distraction they needed because now the plant can do down. Retro in the meantime does trade on to Zilch taking him out. NJR eliminates loading as well. And Flynn is also going to get taken down by NJR real quickly there on the bands roll out. Now it's just down to Quartz in the one versus three here. Already a counter defuse coming in and just like that. Don't even see the kill feed. I'm pretty sure it was Retro that got the kill at the end there. And not much longer behind that, we're going to see the counter defuse come in from Disrupt. They take it, they push themselves further, not that much further away now from closing out the series. It's like, Disrupt plays like a status effect. I think that's the best way to put it. And what I mean by that is they just slowly chip away at the people that they play against. You don't see like a massive amount of engagements all happen at the same time. Even when they tend to execute, you don't see the entire kill feed light up and, you know, four people all of a sudden just died. It's, oh, hey, there was a pick that happened here. Okay, a pick happened there. Okay, a pick happened here. And they just slowly wither the other team away. And that's what they've been continually able to do up against Mirage. I mean, even in these last two rounds, John, we've had two plants go down from Mirage and they have nothing to show for it. Usually when we see a, tan a team plant quite often, often they're actually able to pick up some of those rounds strictly because of the timer you know what i mean like the defense yeah. has to move forward they have to take those gunfights but right now it's not happening for them and i think it's strictly based off of these early engagement that's uh, early engagements that disrupt continually win they take down mirage's man count and then they're just allowed to play with that the entire time and it's working so well for them it's also helping a lot too in the map control department because it's allowing for disrupt to still maintain a good amount of the map and at least on that last site right allows for them to very very quickly pinch and start a retake from areas of the map that mirage may not even have good intel on so there's a lot of problems that mirage have to deal with they're very much killing themselves trying to get that diffuser down onto the ground and that's going to be start to become a pretty massive problem for them here as we reach the final rounds of the map because they're not going to have a lot of time really if any time at all to try and figure out solutions to this if they don't already have them planned retro is going to do a similar setup over here in vip to what we saw from mirage when they themselves were holding here on the inside of theater just a couple rounds back at the initial half. So time to see if this setup will work as well for Disrupt as it did for Mirage, because it worked really well for Mirage. Yeah, it did. And, and like what we were talking about before, this setup is just it's chaos. It's not fun to try and attack into. Like, let, let's just be, you know, full honest, uh, full honest mode here. You don't want to try and attack into this. There's just so many angles to worry about. And you also since Disrupt is setting up in this way, you're also going to have some anchor positions that are going to be different than what you're used to walking into this site, specifically retro inside of guitar. That's something that you don't see a lot of. So NJR as well as shuttle all the way across in billiards with some early engagements onto Mirage. Not much 
damage, but it's actually NJR to die. J9 with the immediate refrag, though, on to loading. Not the best trade in the world, but definitely something for Mirage to try and start us off here. But, oh no, Zilchi gets found and fragged as Flynn with the refrag now. And this is what we've expected more of, especially for a coastline game. Not this slow, methodical execute that we've seen so far by both of these teams. More of a in-your-face, gunfight-centric type of play. So, down into the three versus three now with only a minute and 20 seconds off the clock. Yeah, Mirage very much speeding up the game pace at this point here. They know what the setup looks like as well. They very much know how to play against this. So now it's just a matter of setting up their execute really now. They brought it down to a 3v3. As far as I can tell, our own presence has been dealt with in its entirety, and it's just down to the three remaining anchors in the actual site at this point. It's exactly what it's going to come down to here. So for Mirage, how exactly do you approach this? How exactly do you avoid getting picked off in that game of whack-a-mole that's going to be had over in VIP. If you try to push anywhere from there, the same Ooh. can exist here too, but Flynn's ready for it. He's a whack-a-mole master, apparently. Takes down Reed, brings us into a 3v2, and we'll see if we can push it any further here. Another player back inside of the bedroom starting to fall back. That's going to be the Jaeger. J9 trying to look for a swing potential, but even he's being cautious about how he approaches his angles right now because of all of this setup and all of the potential options that Mirage could use just like that to take him down. Retro quickly gets the trade against Quartz, but the problem is Retro's now alone in the 1v2, and he's got to stop the Tide coming oh. into theater. He's got the smoke charges. Are they going to be enough to stop the plant? Though it doesn't look like it. Blinz is going right down onto the ground. It's got to be a swing here and a convincing one of that to be able to stop this round from being a success. Tries to go for damage through the barricade this time. Time, and it is working to a certain extent. Silence going to be forced out by that. Flynn was already playing the safety game, so he fell back. But no, Flynn beats him to the punch on the rotate out over towards the VIP wall. Flynn will take him down. And with that, Mirage net themselves another round. The caster brain working out for Flynn knew exactly where that rotate was fr coming from. Locks down the smoke inside a guitar and Mirage finally find their first round on offense. That was such a strong round for Mirage. And I hate to say it again, but Flynn knocking out some lights on that one. A triple kill again for him. And he planted the diffuser. The man is doing it all right now. I believe that he has 15 kills, 14 kills as we sit. And we're not even into overtime just yet. A hell of a game from Flynn so far, but we need to continually see this. As you said, he's got to keep being that whack-a-mole master that we continue to see. All right, folks. Coming down to the wire here now. The final four rounds to play into for these teams. One of them needs to try and push up on to seven here. Will it be Disrupt or will it be Mirage? That isn't so clear anymore. It looked like it was going to be Disrupt for sure with the way the past few rounds have gone, but that's a convincing win from Mirage. The question now remaining is, is it just the start of something or is it just a passing glance? That will figure out over the next three or four minutes here as it's going to be another kitchen attack from Mirage. This is a site where Disrupt was able to defend it with flying colors here. They're going to set up their own game up in the theater once again here too. So just like the previous rounds, quite a bit of work for Mirage to do before they can even start thinking about a site kick. I think that it, we really just, or we really just, they really just need to stick to their game plan that they had in that previous round. Don't be afraid of these early gunfights. Just play for the trades instead. It's working out really well for Mirage. And honestly, I think that they can continue to use utilize that throughout the rest of this series. I mean, obviously the gun skill is there for the squad. It's just the trade game of, you know, the other people that are on the team right now. Just loading, not having the best game ever right now, which necessarily isn't his fault. I mean... Just sometimes it happens that way, that siege. And for instance, I mean, Flynn popping off once again. So it's just really, you know, whose day it is. And I'm really, really happy that Mirage has uh, decided that Flynn has been gunning things, but now it's up to Kors with a frag grenade and he takes down Shuttle. That's the way to start it off here in round 11. You're battling for your life, folks. You need to keep fighting. Frag grenade in once again, but this one takes down J9. Completely different person, but it's loading inside of the pocket now and disrupt, not even on their back foot, not even laying down. They're already a foot in the grave here as NJR and Retro, the only remaining members with only a minute off the board. Beautiful, beautiful stuff for Mirage. Just absolutely oh, well, <laughs> tears apart. Just absolutely tears apart the hold over in the theater, mainly with utility as well. Some very well placed utility members of Disrupt definitely going to have to give some second second thoughts to their ADS and magnet placement the next time they try to do that because whenever they had them, they did not work out. For that, they were countered very quickly. NJR with the first trade against the Mirage push here. Retro also trying to stem the tide. 
but it's not going to be too long here until he's put into a situation where he is the only man left on his team. A 1vx for him to try and come out on top of, and it is not even going to come close. Zilchi immediately dispatches of Retro after he lost his teammate, and that's going to be yet another round for Mirage and the lead to go along with it. Only one more round separates them from map number three. Well, here we go, folks. This is what separates the men from the boys. Can disrupt adjust to the playstyle of what Mirage are providing right now. They were able to do it for most of their defense, but now the shoe's on the other foot. Mirage is wearing it proudly, and it doesn't look like they're slowing down anytime soon, unless it's to put that fo foot in someone else's well, you know where I'm going with that. So Disrupt really, really need to change some things up here. These initial gunfights are not working for them. It seems like they want to try and lean on some form of slowdown for their uh, for their site setup right now. Or, you know, to, to try and stem the tide, as you were saying. Because we've got Jaeger, we've got Wamai, we've got Malusi, as well as the Mute and Smoke in the lineup. So not only are they denying Intel, but they're denying site access, as well as any of those throwables that Mirage were able to make really good work with on that previous round nice adaptation so far for disrupt we are headed to double bar though which could give them some trouble mainly because they gave mirage so much early game up here the last time or they excuse me they gave them so much map control up here the last time that they were at this site and we actually saw quartz get some you know good use out of that sledge but it really was disrupt that we're able to battle back with those nitro cells so we'll see which one of them are actually able to come out on top on the double bar site the biggest part of this that Mirage are going to have to try and figure out is going to have to be the Sunrise Bar aspect of it, is those players were left undisturbed pretty much the entire last time. It was defended by Disrupt, and ultimately those players were the ones who were able to counter out the most of you know, most of the pushing power that was coming from Mirage from Office into the Blue Bar, where they were actually trying to plant. That had the kill angle as well against the Planter, so that along with Front Lobby Control are going to be the two main things that Mirage have to try and either corral together so that they can kind of negate most of the presence from disrupt or in the case of front lobby just outright try to kill the players that are holding that of course you're not going to see a lot over towards that front lobby area that i was talking about before from disrupt they actually have a pretty minimal roam game in that aspect but there is still a little bit of it upstairs and that's probably where that could come in late round if we get to that point Mirage, in the meantime, started out with a bit of kitchen control. We're going to see Silent move in to take that for himself. Can see NJR with another angle to work with up top, and the same can be said for J9O as we take a little bit of a closer look as to what's actually going on with that roam game and how it's potentially going to evolve to work against Mirage's late round push. Well, it's already working against them now. Disrupt adjusted the players from Kitchen upstairs instead because of the way that Mirage took this the last time. So, again, good adaptations here from Disrupt, but that doesn't mean that all of a sudden you win the game. Oh, almost a nice pickup there from Loading. And JR getting caught with his pants down. I don't think anyone assumed that someone was going to be at that door right inside of that moment, but he's going to get lit up nevertheless. Loading takes a little bit of damage as well, but this is one of the slower rounds that we've seen in recent history from these two on coastlines. So, J9 as well has as uh, NGR is still, still allowed to exist upstairs. Frag Grenade goes off. It's going to deal some damage to NJR, but doesn't even get rid of his deployable shield. It seems as though Mirage really don't know how to handle this top hold. Loading, trying to throw those grenades, I think, through the drone hole at Aqua Bar. In the meantime, Retro is going to be able to find a nice pick against Flynn, but Zilchi will be able to trade that elsewhere on the map against Reed to keep it at an even 4v4. More damage from the Disrupt players is trying to be thrown out against those attempting to push Office, and it's working. Retro swings, lines up the headshot against Silent, and takes him down. That's going to drop the case temporarily, too, but I don't imagine it's going to be much of an issue. There we go. Quartz has already picked it back up. The problem, though, is that it could still lead to some damage. We had players on those positions. Another nice nade kill is lined up this time by loading as he's going to be able to take out another one of the members of Disrupt. But now J9 getting put into a bad situation. He's been forced to swing out against another member of Mirage, and they've been given the opportunity they need to go for a plan. It's down on the ground. That was arguably the hardest part of this round for Mirage, and they've succeeded in getting it down so now it's up to disrupt to see if they can pull off the retake a lot of presence around or outside of office shuttles already been able to take down zilchi j9 just waiting for the call to try and go for the swing he knows there's players close by does he know they're both holding inside though no he does not and that's gonna lead to an easy pickup for quartz takes down j9 leaves just retro and shuttle in the fight and they have no easy way to force these players out it's still gonna work though shuttle gets yet another pick it's all come down to quartz and shuttle takes him down as well but he stopped it however it's not gonna matter a shuttle got on the counter to fuse in time so we're gonna go to overtime at 6-6 six, six. oh my goodness gracious we have had four plants by mirage on their offensive half and they have won one of them one one plant one 
disrupt battling back time and time again in this retake looking so strong every single time that this plant hits the ground some great rounds there from disrupt this is something that is really really difficult to pull off on coastline as well that's why it's you know leans so heavy into the offensive favor is coastline is not great for trying to move around i mean there's so many separate lines of sight for the offense to use and you know a lot of cutoffs that are provided from that rooftop especially so you know going Going into those post plants, it's going to be difficult for DG to try and battle back through that, but they did it time and time again. Again, Mirage only winning one round where they had the diffuser down and they planted four times on their offense. So moving into OT now, though, Disrupt going to be on arguably the favor, uh, the, the favored side in between these two. Both of these teams picking up four rounds on the defensive side. So DG headed right back to double bar after a really strong showing and shutting down that office take, especially from Retro. Arguably, this is looking like one of their strongest sites out of the pool. So not too surprising to see Disrupt go back into it yet again here for the rematch in overtime. As for Mirage, they have kind of figured it out. They've come very, very close indeed to winning it out multiple times, had the right formula, even got it to a post plant, but just wasn't able to control the chaos of the retake primarily from Shuttle at the end of that final exchange in the two versus two. So they can seal the deal on that one. They'll be in much better shape. The other part of this that Mirage doesn't fully realize just yet is what the Rome game is going to look like from Disrupt because they've already changed it up once and it looks like it may have shifted back a little bit towards the kitchen hole again. We'll go a better look when we see upstairs in a moment but it's a bit of a combo it seems as there's presence in both sites right now or both rooms i guess you should say since that's technically not the site but either way honestly not the worst thing in the world for disrupt to do it, it's more of a like a reading tactic right you're just trying yeah. to get some initial information on where the executes going or where the initial entry is going to be from mirage and that's a really really intelligent thing to do because it allows your roamers to adapt to what the offense is doing every single round of rainbow six siege is different whether it be you know a single piece of utility or an operator going to a different side of the map and you have to account for that every single time especially from that defensive side you have to adapt to what the offense is doing because if you don't adapt you die that's just how it goes in this game so disrupt i really like what they've done here with these reinforcements and adjusting their utility shuttle with a preemptive nitro cell but i like the initial thoughts here as well as he's going to be able to utilize this angle to shut down this guitar push even longer frag grenade in but shuttle being quite intelligent backs up Quartz actually from that vertical play takes him down and that's the problem with some of those vertical angles is that they get to see your feet but you can't even see them yeah so that's a free pick so far from the folks on mirage here no chance for that to get traded at least in the immediate area anytime soon so mirage will be able to flourish on that and have a 5v4 to work off of this is before most of their players even really set foot into the building too so a very nice pick to be found early on as we still need to see the rest of their setup and how it will lead into their execute. You can tell they want to put at least a little bit of pressure over here onto the pool door. There could be some problems in that. Oh um, no, how did that happen? Where is loading even at? Is That was, was on vase. That's his body right there on vase. That was a Next to complete drum. accident. Had to be. He shot him through the... Oh, no. That's... Okay. Yeah, so Quartz ended up banging him through the uh, the hookah wall there. That's just very, very unfortunate, but he immediately makes up for it. He takes down J9 inside of sight. Let's not be all doom and gloom here. Still plenty of opportunity for both of these squads to do something, especially down in this last minute. Quartz confirming his kill with that SMG 11 and some quick work with the hammer. Now working in behind the couch as obviously loading getting taken down, but hey, things have been traded back and it's looking good for Mirage. Up on man count right now, but DG definitely still have a chance here, especially Especially after Reed picks up Flynn as he waltzes his way through kitchen. Reed going to continue to hold down Harry Potter as NJR makes things even more difficult for Mirage. This defense all of a sudden putting on the clamps and Mirage not even allowed inside of the building. Zilti's locked one down inside of office, but NJR still wins it. It's up to course to try and clutch this out. It'd be a clutch ace, but it doesn't matter. NJR wipes the floor with him. Disrupt picking up round 13. They are now on map and mash point. Yeah, after the team kill, things really start to fall apart unfortunately some valiant attempts to get back into it in fact i think killed it brings it down to a 3v3 is after the fact of that very unfortunate team kill but even besides that some very solid positions set up by the members of disrupt they're able to leverage control through the next couple of gunfights especially with the office hold that we had there that was beautifully played from njr and absolutely sealed the deal for his team to now push up on map and in this case match point yet again Okay, so they flashed Tuka. We are now going to Kitchen. Uh, this is probably the... 
honestly, I can't even say it's the strongest site for Mirage. I mean, on their defensive half, their best site was double bar. They're going to avoid that entirely. They're going back to kitchen, which is one of the uh, one of these sites in which Disrupt got their rounds on. Both of the rounds they planted on, this is one of them, the other site being Hookah. So Mirage apparently really likes something about this kitchen setup or how Disrupt attack it because once again, this is for all the marbles. If Mirage lose this round, the series is over and they don't, they no longer not even have a bid towards SI. They can't even fight for it and they can't even be in our major next month. There's a lot of things on the line inside of this round right now. This has to be a bid towards comfortability more than anything else, given what you just said. Uh, you know, I, I, I would think that theater would have been a good bet given how chaotic they were able to make that round and how well they seem to thrive amongst that chaos. But instead to go towards kitchen where like you said they've had very very mixed results if you look at their regulation defenses i think this is just a matter of this is where they feel the strongest this is where they feel they can make the most impact at any given point in the round and they're gonna have to play it out and this is also the round where flynn got like three or four kills at range with the smg 11 too so maybe they're bringing back their thoughts from that round and feeling they can have a repeat performance of that specific instance with all the SMG 11 kills we've been seeing today, I I'm really, really scared if people are actually, you know, get a good sight like the new Red Dot or something on it, you know? <laughs> yeah. just, they're just going to start laying people out at range. It, it, but, I mean, even with, you know, Flynn as well as Retro, I mean, any of these SMG 11 players that live and die by that weapon, they can pull off some immaculate things with those, as we've seen throughout this series. But 45 seconds off the clock now, very slow beginnings here for Disrupt, but that's exactly what we'd expect. They don't want to overstay their welcome or step in a trap that they weren't exactly prepared for some frag grenades early on here actually impact grenades excuse me early on here for courts as he'll impact rotation as well as a hold to be able to hold down mud he has someone on his hookah window though i don't believe courts has very much assistance over on this side of the map either so this could be a major problem if they go for a very aggressive take on this hookah area courts was truly on an island at least until a couple seconds ago but he's made the smart decision he realizes that this is really unholdable given the amount of pressure that's being thrown against him. Three separate players committed to taking him down. It was more than likely going to find success sooner or later. So he does fall back deeper into VIP, where he at least has that potential to swing out later, if not play the top-down angle that he's on top of and punish an eventual kitchen push, whether it be from the window or through the doorway. If he's able to get an angle from there too, although that may be a little bit harder to grasp for. Either way, wasting a good amount of time by kind of maintaining the presence around that area and giving Disrupt the false hope of an early kill here, as it's now brought us down to a little over a minute and aside from the control over top of vip which is going to start to open our excuse me the control over towards huka which opens up their bar push and ultimately this window push too there's not a lot of map control going for disrupt right now so they're pinning everything on this push no, this is extremely minimal. And I mean, Mirage has every portion of the map right now, John. I mean, even all the way up to VIP yeah. and Disrupt seemingly want to go for a kitchen execute. This doesn't seem to be the best idea, especially with no top clear. I mean, they didn't even really take any damage. It's only been Reed that even has a tick off of his health right now. They still have plenty of drones and everything else, but with very low time right now and the time management not really falling to their side, they have to go for something. It seems as though they're going to have to lean on these guns to try and make something happen. Flynn is fresh out of toxic babes now as Retro tries to push in, but he's been blinded by that smoke. No intel for him. They're going to have to try and do it blind. Yeah, absolutely nothing coming off that Yana drone right there. So like you said, it's all going to be just on what they check as they move in. Zilchi and Flynn will get dropped. Zilchi's still retrievable potentially, but no, it's all kills from Disrupt right now. Retro putting the plant down, but Silent can still put a stop to it. Some damage going on to him, but it may not matter if he gets the shot off onto the planter. No, indeed, we are going to see a stoppage, I think, of the plant as a result of that. Mirage will win it out on the timer if you listen <laughs> i actually don't even need to know if he if he needed to let go there or not but i'm pretty sure that's how the round was lost no he 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 lost because he got downed oh he did actually get down okay yeah he got downed but the thing the thing that i was breathing very heavily about is the fact that silent just completed his reload <laughs> I, I like, saw that. that's, he, so that's not that's, a care that's in the world I thought man he didn't kill the planter because i was like I, oh he's gonna let it go off when he when he Ooh. does this that's why i didn't think he killed him but Oh my goodness, that was a very, very scary instance there for just a second, but Mirage lived to fight another round. We're going to sh uh, flash the glass, but then six pick away from it. I honestly really, really like this pickup. They put Silent right back on the Habana. Their offensive lineup has been working really, really well, especially when they start to get aggressive early and you know win those gunfights. Mirage have been able to snowball that every single time that it's happened. So if we see some early picks here, really be looking for how Mirage try and utilize that lead to push it even further. 
Disrupt going to be showing us some newer things. We didn't see a Mira here the last time. This is going to be the first time that we see that, as well as a shield getting dedicated to 90. So completely different showing here for Disrupt. Uh, some similarities, though, obviously. Retro going to be destroying all of the penthouse to VIP wall. So we are still going to have some similarities, just some adapta uh, adaptations, excuse me, uh, made as well. The inside of VIP is going to be a lot more easy to play into, though, as we do have at least two of these walls here that go towards the hallway that have been reinforced i think that far left one is oh no both of these are reinforced excuse me and then i think the one on the left side of what we're now looking at is also reinforced too so there's a lot more to play off of here i think it's all of them right no it's just that one there sorry our, our feed gets really pixelated whenever we move, so it's hard to tell sometimes but it's just gonna be three to four of those walls either way the big point is you don't have that giant line going across the wall anymore that you had in the previous round that was allowing for whoever was inside to go for these crazy picks from like all the way across the luggage but ultimately also expose that player to the same dangers. So it's a little bit more of a safe house now for NJR to play into and try to find some early picks. And also, of course, more than anything, just waste time away from the uh, Mirage attack here. It's a really strong defensive setup, and bringing the Mira along for the ride just makes it more difficult for Mirage to try and deal with it. They do have the hard destruction to, you know, handle these things, especially with Silent, but... I mean, even with that, like, this is going to require a lot of drone work to know what you're walking into. We need to see some really good utilization of this clone on loading to try and get the, you know, try and encompass all of this information to his team. Because if they don't, there's some major slip ups that could happen here. K9 still trying to play out a bit more aggressively here as well in hopes of finding early success. And that will put him at some possibly dangerous contention with loading. NJR should have just seen for a split second loadings pov go past him there so jerry will more than likely call out the player in luggage and jerry very very seriously hoping that he can get a bit more of a lineup against flynn who i believe that is pushing from the other side here although it's just such a hard shot to line up here loading also trying to chuck in the grenade to try and deal with some of the utility that's a bit deeper in but all that'll get him is a bullet to the face unfortunately j9 will succeed in taking him down retro is going to take some shots against him too Tuck take off about 30 of his HP, but he's still alive and well in that mini duel versus Quartz. NJR will, in fact, find another one now against Flynn as he finally meets that angle that he's been looking for for a very long, long time. However, Zilchi with a double all of a sudden, leaping in the inside of Billiards there, is going to bring his team back into the round, quite literally, as now it's gone down to a 3v3, but Che9 instantly dashes those hopes by killing Zilchi. Quartz will have to come in for the exchange. It's down to a 2v2. This could go either way, John. The case down inside of luggage right now. Still have some presence inside of 90 with Reed there as he's trying to get out, but the deployable shield won't allow it. NJR takes down Quartz. It's all left up to Silent now. Is anyone going to peek this? I don't think that we're going to see anything. He sees the foot. He's ready for him. He moves up, but he can't get it. It's a trade and Disrupt wins. Oh my God, what a way to end Coastline in between these two teams. Silent almost had it, but he ends up getting downed in the process. It's a the trade and disrupt move on to sunday flynn and the rest of the squad head back up to canada go back to the drawing board and we'll have to try again at a further date yeah it was neck and neck the entire way head for head even as it literally came to be at the very end of the game an incredibly close matchup both teams playing their hearts out but ultimately disrupt was the team that will come out on top of the matchup and in 2-0 fashion as well they push forward, keeping their qualifier dreams alive. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for Mirage, will be our first team to go out. Very, very unfortunate stuff, especially from the showing that we saw them have on Coastline. That seemed like the real Mirage and what we expected from that team coming into the qualifier. But on this particular Saturday, John, this wasn't the Mirage that we needed earlier today. We really, really needed to see them firing on all cylinders up against SSG, get warmed up and have a productive day today, but that's not what we saw at all. Either way, a very exciting day of matches for all of our qualifier teams, and it's not even done just yet. We still have tomorrow as well. Stokes and I will be here bright and early in the morning to cast the first two matches of the day. Dixon and Taro will be following up with our final match of the qualifier in a best of five fashion as well. But for now, that's going to do it for myself and Stokes. We're not done with the show just yet. We're going to throw it back to our analysis desk one final time to break down this very, very crazy match. Thank you so much, Blue and Stokes. It was great to hear your beautiful voices, but gentlemen, gentlemen, 
What the hell happened in that last fight? I have no idea how they pulled it off, but Disrupt Gaming pulled up with the win. It was pretty incredible. Jacob, I, my heart's still pounding, man. How you feeling over there? I'm really happy. I think Mirage were probably listening in on our comms or trying to stream snipe or something because they heard both Jesse and I say that they weren't going to do well and tried <laughs> to shut us up in the best way possible. They came so close too. There were so many different tantalizing opportunities for them to take advantage of Disrupt's mistakes and there were plenty of them, but at the end of the day, Mirage didn't have it in the tank and they made enough mistakes of their own to really just sink their own grave. Dude, that was one of the craziest maps I've seen in a long time. Easily the best map that we saw all day. Yes. First, there was Flynn popping off the SMG-11. Then we saw Silent rattling off all the kills. Then we switched halves and we started to see Disrupt start to come back. Then we saw Retro get a 3k. Then the nade exploded and killed everybody on Mirage. <laughs> and then we got to the overtime rounds and round 15. And it was a trade and it's on your screen now. And it's like, what is this? Oh. What? Silent NJ oh. trade? That was insane. That was one of the best oh. maps I've ever seen. Well played to Disrupt and Mirage. Like, they should both be very proud of what just happened. Jesse, with, with your knowledge of Rainbow Six and that big brain of yours, I'm feeling like Jackie <laughs> right now. Have you ever seen the last map in the last round end in a trade? I don't know that I have. There's probably some like tier three league or something like out there where somebody's gonna pull up a VOD, yes. but that's definitely Jesse, the only one Jesse, that I can I'm talking I'm talking about good people, Jesse, okay? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I haven't geez. seen it. I'm playing, I'm playing. I haven't seen it, no. <laughs> okay, so that's this nuts. has been absolutely crazy. We have the stats coming in, we have an interview about to come up. You guys don't wanna miss this, so stay put just a little bit. We're not done with the day yet. But first things first. I know they lost, but we, we gotta talk about it. Mirage and Flynn. Jesse, <laughs> I have never seen Flynn act that way before, man. Have you? Listen, Flynn's always been nasty with the SMG 11. I remember back in the days when we were casting together in the Canada Nationals, he's like, listen, I may be a bad player, but I can at least play with the SMG 11. <laughs> he's always been on this, how he's a good SMG 11 player. I think he proved that today, you know, and then they, he gets promoted to Zofia. Listen, in the USA, they might get promoted to Doc, but in Canada, we have free healthcare, so we don't need Docs. Oh my so, god. So, uh, it's the Zofia that he gets promoted to instead. You know, he yes. rocks it well on attack, too. Uh, Flynn had a fantastic game, and uh, even though they lost, he's not going to be happy about uh, the matches tonight, but, you know, he's going to look back and at least be happy he got some uh, some highlights out of it. That's There's for sure. definitely highlights you can take away from this, and I love the fact that Flynn switches Zofia and <laughs> still played objective with, with, the, with the entry fragment. It was, it was phenomenal. And Jacob, I know you wanted to talk about Mirage some more, but you know what? Let's flip it over to Disrupt Gaming for a second because they did avoid getting eliminated once again. This team, they just keep fighting. You can't hold them back. But you know what? We saw some scary rounds. For instance, when they were pushing Kitchen, you started questioning why they weren't clearing roamers. But then at the end of the day, they still won the round. What's your takeaway, man? It is, it's pretty weird the way that they choose their attacks and still come out with the win. It's, it's kind of unorthodox. It's not something that you really see a lot of top tier North American League teams do, which is why it's something I question, especially going back and looking at some of their previous games prior to this qualifier. That's kind of something that they don't do very often when it comes to obtaining map control, clearing roamers, ensuring that they have all the rooms that they need, either upstairs or down. It's not something that they do nearly as frequently as other teams in the US division. So you're right. When we were watching, especially on some of their kitchen attacks, I'm just watching and waiting for them to do something, but they play very heavy on that last 20 seconds. And they managed to make it work. They're bursting in, they're winning their gunfights, and they're relying on their intelligence in order to ensure they get the swings wherever it comes down. That's why the NA League right now is so important. It's online. You're either swinging or you're getting swung, and Disrupt usually come out on the other side of those fights. Yeah, Jesse, uh, we saw a lot of close rounds, and no, to be completely honest, Mirage, they, they choked about two, three rounds, and this should have been Disrupts yeah. all the way, but it was still close. What about mm -hmm. Disrupt? Do they need to tweak and fix in order to still stay in this bracket to get to the championship game? Um, I mean, I think Coastline is proven to be a bit of a, a sore map for DG. You know, that first matchup and now, you know, playing it against Mirage are coming so close. I certainly mm -hmm. think that it's one where they need to take another look at their defenses, right? Take a look at how they approach this map. Um, I did like the penthouse theater strat that they mm -hmm. brought out. I thought that was kind of neat. They opened the entirety of VIP. It's just like, okay. Um, and it was, it was cool. I liked the, the things that were bringing out there. Um, but I think certainly in that, uh, in that Sonics matchup, some things were exposed. Um, yeah. NJR <laughs> is playing fine. Don't yes. touch a thing about him. 17 and 8. My god, okay. You know, retro 3-0 on the, uh, on the entry is really nice too. 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot that they're doing right. It was a late match against Mirage. I mean, things are going <laughs> to get kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> they can go back to drawing board on some things, but I think they're fine overall. The one thing that um, I... So, the first time I have ever casted Pro League, I, uh -huh. I kept hearing pros say, Retro owns Coastline. Retro <laughs> owns Coastline. And me being the newcomer, I'm like, okay, you know, he's the objective player. He's not the fragger. So how does he own Coastline? I saw him play when I cast, I think it was with Kicks, And he he went off. He dominated the map. And 13 and 8 for Retro. I mean, Jacob, everybody on this team is now stepping up. This team went from a meme where everybody said, okay, NJR is going to carry, you know. What's, what's happening? How can they get better? But now, everybody's contributing to the win. Everyone, maybe aside from Reed, because I think in both of those last maps, he was still kind of rocking the bottom of the scoreboard. But that's okay. If he's playing more laid back in a support role, you don't always need to get the frags. But more so to your point, Disrupt kind of have gone through a little bit of an identity crisis ever yes. since stage one, when they were still trying to figure out what their team looked like when they got into the North American League. And it's a squad full of, you know, ragtag rejects that are still trying to figure out where they're all supposed to fit in. I believe they're still trying to get themselves sorted out, even until today. But with performances like this and even still strong like sorry showing up strong against the sonics in the previous series you really shouldn't discount how tenacious this team is they can go the distance if they need to and against a team like mirage it seemed like it was easy pickings they could have had coastline way sooner but at the end of the day it's either if it's a 7-0 or an 8-7 a win is still a win right yeah it is jesse we have an interview with waffle coming up shortly East. He actually, the interview is ready. You know, forget your question, Jesse. Get Waffle on the screen. That's Good, like, I want to hear I'm, Waffle. I like that Canadian right there. Waffle, what's going on, man? How's it going? Wait, Waffle, you, you are Canadian, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay, good, um, I'm right. You know, first off, Waffle, congratulations. Jesse and Jacob, they're extremely happy for you and the boys. But um, we see levels of progression right now. If If you can now... Do you care to share with us, the audience, because we, we actually want to hear this type of information, things that you and the team are currently working on from weaknesses and you're trying to make better day by day? Um, in terms of weaknesses right now, it's just like mostly dealing with utility and focusing on trades, like being in position, making sure we're close to each other, and then executing as a team, especially on attack, like um, near the end, near the end of rounds, you know, making sure we're not pushing one by one. It's all like one cohesive unit. And then on defense, it's mostly just, uh, just trades and playing together. Like if you're, uh, in a bad spot, just making sure you can call your teammate over and making sure we know like blind spots where they can come from and what's open and what's not. So just making sure we have everything covered and knowing what kind of plays they can make to catch us off guard. It, it makes a lot of sense, and I, I honestly, I see the progression happening, and the trades are starting to become a non-issue because everybody else is starting to step up. Waffle, you know I've been hard on Shuttle. Shuttle's a star now. NJR is NJR. But me personally, I don't care about the stat line, especially for that final map. I feel like today was J9 O's best performance with Disrupt Gaming. He showed out in a big way. Um, Why did you guys really go for him? And that, not a big name out there, but Jay and I know. But what was it about him you really liked? Um, so we tried out a couple people. First off, like Jay and I know came up because uh, he has, you know, he used to team with NJR, and also yeah. our analyst Mango uh, used to be their coach. Um, so obviously, he was like one of our the, the people we wanted to try out. And when we tried him out, he kind of brought up. But he brought everything we kind of needed. He like he could think on his own. He could make plays on his own. He would bring a fresh mindset to the team. And obviously he had great aim. So we just had to make sure that we put him in the strats correctly. And it would iron itself out eventually. All right. And Wafu, for the last question out there. Um, of course, I want you to end it off, you know, saying a piece to your fans. What can we expect from Disrupt Gaming tomorrow? And I want you to be as honest as possible with me. Because we really like what we see with this team. And um, as long as NGR and Shuttle are being walking highlight reels for this roster, there's, the future looks really bright right now. Yeah, so for tomorrow, obviously, we're going to take a, just like an hour break or something and just go back to VOD watching, see where we messed up, see where we can improve, and then continue our counter strength for tomorrow. Um, we rematch against this, well, either SSG or Sonics. And then yeah. if we win that match, well, then it'll be SSG or Sonics. Um, so we just have to make sure that we iron out mistakes and um, 
you know, just focus on our game plan, really. All right. And Waffle, like I said, this is your time to talk to the fans. So feel free. Um, well, <laughs> today was kind of a rough showing. I think we played really well against the Sonics, but Mirage, at least Coastline, was kind of a, even though we won, is kind of disappointing performance from us. We played kind of sloppy, so we're going to be looking to clean that up tomorrow. But overall, you know, we have um, Cashflow and Cliff to thank for all this. Our owners, you know, they make the, all this possible. And then a family and friends supporting us. And lastly, you know, the fans that have been sticking with us since the beginning. And that means a lot to us. And it's possible because of them. All right. Now, Waffle, I want to thank you for this interview. And hopefully you can carry me in ranked again. Um, I'm not sure if I can use Monty anymore, but we'll find out. So uh, you and the boys, I want to say congratulations. And hope you have a great night. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Have <laughs> a night, great man. night, Belly. Thank you. That that is true though, Jesse Waffle carried me pretty pretty hard. He, he's Dude, how do I player. get in that stack? What? I, I, I want to be in the, We can the get you in that stack. Player. I mean, we might uh, be boosted, a good stack but it works. because I've been in Veli stacks before, and I think I'm usually at a net elo loss. Just saying. I, and then also, it's not just my stack. I think Stokes carried you to plat. Is that right? The, okay, yeah, the first time. Okay, fine. We're really going make it this quick, far. Make it quick. We have to play of the day. Make it quick. <sighs> Never mind. No, it's fine. It's fine. We don't need to remind people how bad I actually am at this video game. What's the play of the game, by the way? All right, so the course of play of the day, before we put it up on screen, Jacob, what do you think it's going to be? That Canadian 3K with the vector, my dude. That cafe play was insane. We were all like, this has to be it. All right, my dude. <laughs> Jesse, what do you think, man? I don't know. That was a good one. I think there's some other great ones as well. There was an ace, obviously, on Theme Park. Uh, NGR just walking into sight. I think this last game had a bunch oh. of great ones. But yeah, that 3K was uh, was a flashy one for sure. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. There's a lot of great plays today. Both those plays are nice. But you know what? Production, throw it up on the screen. I can't wait to see it myself. All right, and... Hopefully, one of you guys are right. Hey. Oh, right. there yeah. it goes. High what? impact this play. Like, this was really impressive. All right, wait for Flips him to pop over. off here. Boop. Pick. <laughs> Boop. Why? Why? Three six heaps. bullets. That's Only insane. six bullets in the chamber, and he still makes it work. That man has never lost his touch. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that is the Corsair play of the day in Really happy to show that off to you guys, but let's talk about the damage that's been done today. Let's put the bracket on the screen. Some great matches went down. Three of them and one team actually went home, and that's going to be Mirage Canadian's top team. But in the winner's bracket, we're going to see Space Station Gaming face off against the Sonics. Now, that's going to be a hot one. After that, the loser will face off against Disrupt Gaming in yet another elimination game. And then, of course, we're going to have the finals. Now, for tomorrow's schedule... Make sure you wake up bright and early because the action will kick off soon. It's going to be 10, 20 Pacific time zone. That's going to be SSG versus Sonics. And then after that, we're going to have Disrupt's game against the loser of that matchup. But with that being said, all right, today is finally done. We've come to an end. It is, it's been something special. Um, Jesse, any last yes. words you want to put out there before we close out the stream? Uh, I just think we had some great games. You know, thanks everybody for watching. Tomorrow's gonna be even better. There's no doubt about yes. it. There's so much on the line. Uh, I'm gonna head to bed after this and wake up bright and early tomorrow. I'm really excited. Jacob, day one is finally down in tier one. What are your thoughts? How do you feel? What's expected? Well, it's just about as crazy as I thought it was going to be stepping in this building. So I appreciate you guys having me and being willing to endure my presence for the past 10 hours. But today was kind of the day where we had to, we, somebody had to go home. That kind of guarantees that the quality of games for tomorrow is only going to shoot through the roof. One game that we know, one game that we're still waiting on the participant for, and then a grand final that if I'm not mistaken, we're playing in a best of five. Yes. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, once more, yes, we miss Jackie a lot. Jackie, if you're out there watching, we miss you. We love you. Can't wait till you come back. Jacob, Jesse, you guys were phenomenal today. Me, I had a blast. I want to give a shout out to all the players that participate. I want to give a shout out to the production team. And tomorrow, once again, we'll be back for the final day of the NA qualifiers. Excuse me, the NA major qualifiers. The winner of this, they're going to face off with TSM, Oxygen, and Dark Zero. So... Plenty of action awaits us, and I can't wait. I hope all of you have a great night, and I'll see you later.